Hello, everybody. Today is oh 1.11, 1 11 p.m. in my on my screen, and it's 2.11 on everybody else on on Jim's screen, and I'm not sure about everybody else. We are start and today is September 28, 2015. We are starting our first lesson, Reiki class, first Reiki class. It covers Reiki one, part A, and we'll do part B and maybe even part C, but we'll see how it goes. At the end of the class, the participant will receive the certificates, official Reiki 1 certificates. Jim and I are certified Usui Reiki teachers, teacher masters, masters teachers. Uh, and we, we, we do, we're doing the first first time, we're doing the first time the class, for the first time the class online, we're doing for the first time. Um, Jim, would you like to give us, and, and Jim will leave now for for our 40 minutes and he will come back and I will do the first part of the class. Jim will do the second part of the class and then we will join in um, first attunement. We'll do, we'll do several attunements, I'll explain in a minute. Jim, would you like to give us a, a blessing for the start? Yes, sure. One moment. We thank you, Mother, Father, God, that you have seen fit to give us Reiki, that you've seen fit to give us all these wonderful energies that can help us heal ourselves and others. We just ask that you would bless us so that we may be able to help as many people as possible. We may be able to spread the love and bind ourselves together with as many people as possible in love and healing in these next many years. We, this is the beginning of a wonderful journey for some people who will be able to help many people heal. And that is just a lovely gift. And it makes you feel so important. But you have to remember that it is God who must be thanked for this gift. And that you are only the tool that's being used. And when you're getting this energy that comes to you, you realize that you are being healed as well. And you, that is another thing to thank God about. And we pray that this information, these hand positions, all the messages that are coming to each and every one will sink in and become a valuable part of who they are in the healing world. Thank you very much. And we praise and thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, my my pre presentation will be mostly organizational <laughs> in a big part. But I guess that's how it goes. Um, so you traditionally the Reiki is taught in one shot, the Reiki one is taught in one shot, but it is taught in person. And the vibration which the teacher creates is passed to their students and we are doing it remotely so we decided to do it at least in two shots. So today is four hour shot and next week the same time Monday there will be another part B of that class. And in between, uh, we would ask you to go and find way, uh, ways to practice and also find the local Reiki community because it's, it is what happens in real classes. The students become connected to their Reiki communities through their teacher and through other invitations and things. And, and um, you would have to do it yourself and you, we will guide you uh, how to do it. it. Obviously in a week you might not be able to find the community but at least you will be able to find the ways to practice your Reiki one way or another. Now there is another request from people. Are they, uh, this is recorded and broadcasted and some people like the one in Japan wants to extend the class but that time for them is not suitable because I think it's right in the middle of their sleep at night. So we will do the, um, for those who can study themselves, who are very organized, 
we will do what we'll give them these recordings and then after they studied that and did their homework they will go and connect to us and we'll do a couple of uh, sessions shorter sessions shorter classes where we give them attunements and things online in real time especially for them so contact us for for this we'll do for self study plus attunement another form we need to give it a name basically self study form of class um, and that's about it their email right now is reiki at humancolony.org and this today is very very sluggish it takes about four hours for email to reach me which is not which is not unexpected but unusual uh, a faster way would be to connect to me through Max through Skype Max uh, 2040507 Max 2040507 to sign up or if you if you're one of those students who signed up and didn't make it Skype me and I will give you the the link so you can maybe uh, you can join us in the middle of the class maybe if I pay attention to the Skype all right. Um, and uh, I welcome the students. Hi, dogs. Hi, um, Jillian. And hi, Stan. How are you? Hi. Unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I I suggest you jump in with the questions because we want it. We want you partic to participate and we want you to engage. So, anytime you have anything, jump in with the, with questions. Okay. okay. Thank you, Max. Where are you located all, everybody? I'm Dog, in, uh, yeah. I'm in the, the UK on the East Coast in a small town called Cleethorpes. Wow. And it's uh, Welcome. 18 minutes past seven in the evening there, so uh -huh. I shall, um, by the time we've finished, my eyes may be struggling to stay awake, but I'll try my best. <laughs> um. If you get asleep, you can watch later. <laughs> Doug, you're somewhere in Texas, right? No, I'm in uh, California. Um, California. Yeah, Union City. It's about halfway between Oakland and San Jose. Oakland and San Jose. I know San Jose well. Okay. And Stan, where are you? I'm in France. Wow. Welcome. So it's. Uh, How is the weather there? 8.20 for me. It's, uh, it's okay. It's a nice uh, autumn day. Uh, sunny, but not, uh, not too cold yet. All right. So what, um, what experience of Reiki do you have? Have you had a Reiki treatment before? No. Um, I have. I've had Reiki treatment before. Uh-huh. And Julian, did you have Reiki treatments? I've had t uh, two sessions before. Only two. Uh -huh. Tell me how they felt. Very, very relaxing. Just you just want to stay there forever. You know, very calming and relaxing, and nice experience. Mm -hmm. And Doug, what we what with your experience? Um, I've had about half a dozen, and usually it um, makes me feel very um, alive, like full of energy. Ah. Uh, a, lot, a lot of things come to the surface usually. That's kind of, I guess, what it feels like. What, for example, what is coming to the surface? Issues, whatever problems I may be having, stuff like that, blockages that come up. Uh -huh. Yes, Reiki, uh -huh. can, Reiki can work that way as well. All right, let's let's do organizational part. Continue with the organizational part. So I sent to some of you. I think uh, to most of you, I sent the manual, and the manual is wonderful. And are you capable of self-studying between the two classes? Are you capable of studying the manual? How do you feel? Okay, I'll go first. I did have a look at it, Max. Um, I must say my eyes aren't particularly good at reading online, um, but I have got a bit of background knowledge because I was going to do Reiki about five years ago, but then the, the teacher who I was going to go with um, 
unfortunately got cancer. Um, she's all right, but I didn't get round to signing up again. But I have got um, a book, a big book on Reiki, and I've also kind of looked at it on online, and I've got some folders with some of the um, the symbols in. So uh -huh. I mean. My mem I haven't, it's, it's a while since I've gone through them, but mm -hmm. um, I was kind of familiar with, um, you know, how it all started and that, but um, I obviously need a refresher and tunings and all things like that, so um, I'll probably keep looking at the, um, the uh, online thing that you sent, but also referring to my book as well. Uh-huh. Um. Stan, are you comfortable studying uh, at home between the classes for seven days? Yes, yeah, sure. But uh, I haven't, I haven't received uh, the file or the. Yeah, the yeah. If if I forget after the class, Entry. remind yeah. me. But <laughs> uh, and I will post it also online. Mm -hmm. And Doug, how are you? How do you would you feel? Are you comfortable That's studying? Uh huh. Okay. I just wanted um, to give. Um, I mean, there are two options. One option is I go through the book and give you the background, which is traditionally taught. Or the alternative is you study yourself and we just do more more of the discussion of what you read in the book, other than to me to give to give it for the first time. And instead, I I, I would like to give you higher level higher level explanations, basically of metaphysics of Reiki, and also I would like to give you their part on um, galactic Reiki, basically the alien Reiki, which I think would be just um, a plus. You would you would get your Usui traditional understanding and you would get uh, the the galactic up, up, update of it, you would get the metaphysical up, update of it. So that, that, that's the plan. And again, we have a limited amount of time, but, but I think it sh we should be able to do it. So in, in, in the meantime, um, I will ask Kim to uh, check on you how, how, how you're going with the book. And um, so she, she will be checking on you and you can kind of have, have a person who is, who is uh, helping you to keep on, on track on this book and, uh, and the questions. There are, the questions on Reiki are very simple, very simple. It's just very basic things what the Reiki level one uh, practitioner, like level one practitioner, should know very very basic things. You you might already know many of them, but but there are you know when we give you the certificate, we need to know. One more thing I want to introduce is more or less like we will do some sort of exam at the end. Traditionally, the Reiki doesn't have an exam, but uh, every everyone who wishes to get Reiki ha uh, gets it. So so we will do the same, but but still there will be certain because we are not in person communicating. We'll we'll do some 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 sort of question and, and understanding where you are and if you didn't get to the point we might uh, teach you a little more to produce uh, to produce you know a good, a good good Reiki 1 practitioner. So the levels are obvious. Reiki 1 is tell me what's 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 the difference between Reiki 1, 2 and 3 and 4, do you know? Um, let me think. Uh, I don't know how to word it. <laughs> there's, there's one that you can just practice, I suppose, on yourself and your yes. friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then level two is that where you kind of sort of charge for it. Yes. More professional. And yes. And then the next level, I don't, is the next level teaching it, teaching Reiki to other students? Uh, yeah, there are different versions, but basically level three is master, which knows everything how about how how to treat people, but not yet how to teach. And level four is master plus teacher to produce other students and teachers. Mm -hmm. So level one, we initiated you into Reiki, and I'll explain what it is. Level and you know how to heal on basic level. And but but you, uh, we don't instruct you how to set up your own healing practice. 
and you can uh, accept donations, but you know, don't normally charge for Reiki. Level two, we t teach you everything about the marketing and the business of Reiki, which is which is funny how it is uh, uh, advanced lately. But basically, lots of people succeed in becoming professional Reiki healers, and lots more people don't succeed. So maybe Reiki two wasn't taught properly, or they are just not good in in business in business yeah being good in business is a sub special talent and i believe jim will be a great teacher because he is successful reiki practitioner he gets you know more than he can handle he has more people desire who desire his his services than he he can have, uh, he, he, well then he has time uh, level three, you, uh, and le level one, you don't get any symbols. You get symbols in your hand, b hands, but no explanations, and you don't study symbols. And it is just traditional. Uh, in the tradition, it's how it works. So obviously, if you go Google Reiki symbols, they're all there for you. If you if you feel like you're ready, uh, you can. But traditional teaching is you just get the secret knowledge without explanation of the symbols. Reiki two, you get four symbols and then uh, Master Reiki you get one, which is three you get one more symbol and Reiki four basically you get the explanation how to teach and and that is actually complicated because when you practice you're free to do a lot of different things everybody has their own personal style of Reiki but when you teach you're supposed to teach according to their to their rules and tradition, and I think it is important because because we are dealing with something ancient, something classical, and if you're on the right, if you're tuned to the, to the right note, to the right tune, you will be good. So I think that's uh, so teaching to the tradition is good, especially because in the last uh, class, the last lesson we got channeled founder of Reiki and that was I think was was wonderful mm -hmm. so now if you if you look up your previous video we had Usu, uh, Mikao Usui coming and giving us the blessing and his his story I think uh, even more we, we want even more now to follow his steps and follow the tradition and connect specifically to him and to his students all right um, so the, this, the the main secret of Reiki is that it is conscious. The Reiki energy is conscious. It is it has its own choices, and as I understand them, it is a group of spirits who work with us on the other side. It's not just energy it's energy with a conscience a conscience yeah so I believe some of those spirits would be the founders of Reiki the masters uh, the human spirits and some of those would be some other spirits which you know we don't know what they are but these are could be any angelic forces which help which help healing and I think these spirits are in close contact with our spirit guides, with our higher self, with angels, with all other, uh, with God, with all other uh, consciousnesses and personalities on the, on the other side. So that's why it is so simple. That's, what, that's how the Reiki could be so simple because we basically trust that our helpers on the other side know, know what they're doing. And um, it is when when the sickness comes. When the sickness comes, say you mentioned, uh, Jillian mentioned that there was a teacher who who died of cancer, right? So so Reiki sometimes helps and sometimes doesn't. How is it possible that a Reiki teacher can die of cancer, right? How is it possible? Right. Um, it happens. It happens. Uh, we have another friend 
my close friend who was amazing Reiki master, amazing channel channeler, and he died of cancer as well. So, so basically, uh, the ways how people exit can be many, and cancer is just one of them. Uh, Reiki people are still sometimes get sick and sometimes die, and you know, everybody dies, and and it's 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 not a universal solution. It's one of many solutions. It's one of many tools how to stay in balance. Other tools come very close to that, and I highly recommend that you combine your Reiki with other tools as well. And other tools are energy healing arts. Uh, Qigong and Tai Chi are wonderful uh, energy healing arts which are relative to Reiki. I believe, at least in one source, I found that the founder of Reiki, uh, Mikao Usui, was a Qigong practitioner. So he first knew Qigong, and then he discovered Reiki and established his own school. And yoga is another energy healing art also, which is very re related, very relevant to Reiki. Um, so yoga and Qigong are very ancient. Qigong in China and Japan and 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 yoga in, in uh, India, they're very ancient. So so they it comes from very ancient tradition, and in most cases it is it was like you have to study for the whole life to be a Qigong master, a Qigong practitioner, or yogi. You had like that was a thing that we that you not like now in, in Western culture you can take a little bit of that like a little bit of that take that class or take that class in those times it was basically a lifelong sort of profession more or less you have to be really like that's what you were either Qigong or Tai Chi or yoga master or uh, Tibetan monk which is similar heal, kind of healing art, Tibetan healing art. And in every culture there was an energy healing art where people would heal with their hands, right? They would uh, put the hands on, on others. In, uh, in Spanish culture, they put one hand right on, on, on the back of the person like that, and, or, or two hands, and then they just send the healing energy through that. Uh, there is another art where, where you sit and you send the energy from the distance like that. Uh, on many paintings you see the, 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 their priests laying hands on, on people, right? So, so that's a very ancient, uh, very natural way of healing. And um, what is the difference with Reiki is that at some point Mik Mikao Yusui uh, was seeing that all, all of his mastery, all, all of that is not sufficient for the, for, for the time. He wanted something simple. He wanted like true healing. And he prayed and he got that healing in his hands, healing capacity. And also he, uh, he was able to transfer it to others. And it was so simple that uh, there was not much to do there. It's, it is just uh, a very brief, very brief uh, at least for, at, at this moment, it's a very brief introduction. It's a few hours here and a few hours later, and we basically introduce you to the Reiki energy, and then you, you, it works with, with you, and you work through it together. You get on the journey, and then there is a transformation. So basically, uh, the attunement is that introduction. You sit with your hands offered to Reiki. We put the Reiki symbol, the first Reiki symbol, into your hands, and and this symbolizes your consent, your commitment to receive it. And we symbolize, the teachers, we symbolize the passage of the tradition. So it's not any healing, not any energy, it is exactly that energy which was discovered by Mikao Usui about 100 years ago in Japan, on the mountain. And that's, that's the basic understanding. We introduce you, and that 
and then there is a transformation that starts from that point. Obviously, you can practice your healing energy before that. And after you are introduced, usually it takes, you start feeling the transformation in your energies. You, and you have to basically continue your commitment to these energies. You practice every day sending the energies. And as you send the energies, every day things change and people get even like kind of waves of transformation for next for the remainder of their life, but basically certain periods after that people still continue transforming. So usually the Reiki 2 lesson is not taking place until the transformation is complete and different Reiki teachers see different time, but I think two months is a safe estimate. Somewhere between three weeks and two months that a transformation takes place. Basically your energy flow is somehow expanded, so it's rerouted to send more energy through your hands. And obviously, as Usui explained, it's from his perspective, it's you don't have to analyze it, it's just God working through your hands. And I think it's a very good understanding because you have to basically trust that what happens um, is for good. Trust is absolutely essential. Basically, questioning questioning is okay once in a while but as you question spiritual things they become blocked so you want to question a little bit and then shift back to the trust you kind of go back and forth until you're you're convinced it's um, the belief is is essential but basically you know for me it wasn't you know I questioned many things but Reiki was so obvious for me that that I didn't have to, you know, I didn't have, I never even have had a, a, a need to question anything. I experiment with it, but I always had it in my hands, basically. And after attunement, it was just more of it. But I was, you know, I think for me was the first initiation into energies was a big initiation, was um, Tai Chi class. And you, you know, in Tai Chi, you, you hold a ball of energy, and you hold a ball of energy like that, and people say, do you feel the energy between your hands? And as a, as a scientist, I'm, I never actually know, like, is it me feeling real energy, or is it me imagining the energy? Maybe it's all self-delusion. So I experimented with it, like, um, for me, a basic experiment, which I suggest you do too, is to practice sending the energy from one hand to another. And that practice basically allows you to sense it better. You kind of train yourself to sense it better. And for me, right hand sending to left is way stronger than left hand sending to right, way stronger. So that's the movement I do. That's the movement I do. That's my basic, that's left to right and that's right to left. And as as I do this, what I feel, right now it's, say, 15% strength. I feel a little blow. Like, or maybe electric charge, maybe electric charge, electric discharge. But then I experimented more and I discovered that it's, it remains there even if I put a, a metal barrier or water barrier between the hands. And I know, as a scientist, that electric discharge or electric uh, electromagnetism doesn't go through through conductors. And on with Reiki, Reiki energy goes just fine through that. And there is uh, more experimentation which I did as a scientist, but but basically I believe it's real. I believe it's real. Um, I mean, when you work on people, there is so many confirmations. Um, I will share a couple with you. Say one, I think I described it in the past lesson, but I think it's very important observation. So I hold my hands above, sometimes you touch, right? Most cases you touch. And in some cases you hold the hands in the air. And when you touch, touch or no touch, big question in, in Reiki 1, touch, when you touch, when you put your hands somewhere. Um, the close is transparent to Reiki, as any conductors, anything is transparent to Reiki energy. So when you touch, you have a, 
how do you say, uh, the, the word per, attaching perception, there is a word for that. Touching perception of, of, of the patient, and the patient feels the touch. You feel the, you feel the patient's skin, and the patient feels your touch. Uh, so there is a similar short-circuit feedback. You feel that they feel, and they feel that you feel. It is very similar when you look at the, at the eyes of the person and the person looks at your eyes. There is the same circular feedback. So don't ignore it. Touch is important. Being touched and touching is essential. And in different countries, it's it's different. Like in Brazil and Russia, touching is absolutely natural. People touch each other, even people who don't know each other, like in, in, in subway or... Uh, it's it's no okay to touch a person. Uh, some and, and the touch can pass different information. In English culture, the other way around, people even married people rarely touch each other. Especially they don't touch each other in public. So what happens in English speaking culture and France is between in between, I think there is a lot of Frenchmen who touch each other a lot. So so in English speaking culture, uh, there is sickness based, uh, which is arised for, from lack of being touched. People really have touch withdrawal, and and that is sickness by itself. So Reiki for English-speaking people is is a finally a way to get touched as you were touched as a, uh, when you were a, a baby. A baby babies are touched, but after that they. They are not touched anymore. So people get touch, touch withdrawal, and Reiki is, first first of all, is a healing from that touch withdrawal. Because when you become uh, touched, you, you feel your body better. It's like massage. You just discover pieces in your body which you never paid attention to. And sport is the same thing. You just, you know, if you start moving and you get, get pain in your muscles, you your attention, your attention is focused on things. And that's why the positions where you touch are also important because there is that feedback, the circular loop. You, the healer knows where the, their attention is and the patient knows where the, where the energy goes. Now, when the Reiki starts flowing, it's even more... Reiki energy starts flowing, it's even more... Uh, tangible. Some people feel the Reiki energy a lot and some people don't and it's okay. Some uh, healers of level one feel the energy flowing right away and other healers of level one never never feel it. They, they put their hands and they can do a perfect job healing but they barely feel the energy flow. So, so it's okay. That is, uh, it's not required to be a good, uh, to feel the energy to be a good healer. You can substitute with your faith and intention. All right. Why the positions are important? First, it is sort of go around the body and um, and deliver the the energy and deliver the focus of your attention, which focus of your attention is as important as really where the hands are. You can put the hands on one place and send the energy to the to just another place, just fine. Uh, next thing in teaching Reiki 1 is that um, many of us are ignorant about anatomy and about medicine. And I say we come to this earth, to this life, to study medicine. We come to this life to study medicine. Some of us become doctors. Some of us study the medicine as doctors and others study the medicine as patients. Choose your path. You either study it from a book and become a healer, or you become, <laughs> or else, or else. You are, at the end, you, everybody knows medicine pretty well. Um, it's better to study it anyway. I guess the soul, they need that knowledge, and I got the messages that we come here really to study medicine because later when we come up there, as a spirit, we design new races, new civilizations, new planets, new life, and some of us, many of us. And we have to understand the mistakes of the past to build a better 
species, to better race, to improve the human race. That's what the spirits do. Part of their work is to create new illusion of life, new life. Any questions so far? Mm, not at the minute, Max, now. All right, so, so uh, Jim will to go about the places of the hands. Jim will go about that. But basically, when you place your hands, you really have to pay attention. It's very beneficial when you heal someone to, to do Reiki diagnosis, which is not medical diagnosis. It's a different. It's spiritual diagnosis. You diagnose the blockages in energy, negative energy vortices, and uh, basically the design of the body. So you do Reiki diagnosis. Reiki understanding of the energies, flows, and blockages. And second, you um, intend for certain things to happen. Intent for certain things to happen. Uh, I will give you a couple examples. Say, the first thing to do, uh, I place my hands, I start from placing my hands on, on the patient's uh, head. And I can't really, I don't have a teddy bear. <laughs> I really can't. So I do that. That's my position. I put, it's like upside down uh, Vulcan uh, mind, mind melt. And sometimes it's, it goes like that. It's not critical, but some of those connections feel great. Some of those connections feel great. And my intention Max, first, yes? Do you cover the eyes when you do that? Are, are you doing it like this, covering the eyes, or is it on the sides more? Great question. Oh, okay. I'll create a teddy bear. So that would be my teddy bear, right? So that's the head. I wish I had the eyes. I can I get... Um, no, I don't have any drawing pick things in here. Actually, I do. All right. Next time we'll be prepared. I didn't realize the questions will go this direction. I was thinking more about the talking about their spiritual component of that, but of course that matters too. So that's my patient, all right? And uh, when they come, all right, when they come, uh, what do I do? I sometimes I have them sign things like I. It's not medical thing, basically the disclaimer, I will share my disclaimer thing. Uh, it's not a medical treatment, I'm not replacing the doctor, it's spiritual, purely magic thing, and they, you know, and that's why the court is, uh, you know, uh, legal action is not, is not relevant, because we are, I'm doing pure magic. Okay, so, and then I invite them either to sit or to lay down. So, in, in either case, I place my hands like that. Like that. So the ear, the the finger around the ear, and one on the brow, on the, on the forehead, and one on this bone. And uh, I wouldn't say that's classical. Classical is palm is more closed, and that thing I learned from Jim, and Jim learned it from extraterrestrials, and that's a different story. <laughs> So basically, in uh, classical traditional Usu, Mikao Usu is Reiki, the palm is more or less closed, and we send energy more through the middle of the palm, and the energy comes diffused, golden diffused energy. I call it golden, I don't really have an other name, I don't really see the color, but I feel that it is diffused. So golden is a good word for soft, golden is soft, right? Golden is soft, soft energy, golden. And it knows where to go. And then there is also energy which is directed. It's uh, springs or rays of light or helixes, helixes which are directed straight, uh, not very straight, they kind of bend, but these are lines that come out of the fingers. And they come through the bones. So this comes through, I guess, through the, I don't really know where from it comes. It may be through meridians or bones or something, but it out, comes out from the soft tissue here. There is soft tissue here. And from the bones come the 
the heart energy, which resonates through the bones. So some things come through nerves, and some things come through bones, and bones are resonators. So this is sharper, I call it silver, silver energy. And I heal with both soft golden energy and silver energy. And Jim does a lot of that silver energy, and he connects to bones. When he senses the bones, and he connects with the fingers, not necessarily the end of the finger, it could be any any bony part of the finger, but basically you connect to bones and you resonate with the bones of the person. <laughs> yeah, there is a, a song, a Russian song, where um, the person starts understanding the bones in other people, and a woman just becomes more of a skeleton than than a woman, right? And and that sort of becomes disgusting for the person. So I also went through that through that um, anatomical sort of transformation. So how can you see a beautiful person if you know the anatomical structure? But you know any doctor comes through that. Anybody who studies anatomy, you you basically study the anatomy, but then you you see the whole person again, even even though you see the anatomy as well. So I think it's very good for the Reiki person, for Reiki practitioner to know the anatomy and to know also the functional anatomy, for the, to focus on certain functions. Say one of the things when, when you deal with the sinuses, in the sinuses, right? Um, you intend you intend to send the energy uh, and to open the vessels and to help the lymphatic drainage because there is a lot of clogging of lymphatic vessels there and uh, you have to understand lymphatic. Lymphatics is a white white blood basically and it doesn't have a heart, it pumps by itself, it's a drain so blood brings the liquid and leaves, uh, blood comes through big vessels, there are tiny capillaries, capillaries and then it leaves through big vessels. But uh, in the capillaries, the, the liquid leaks into the tissue and it's the, the liquid between the cells and the cells dump their garbage in that liquid. So lymphatic vessels are the ones which collect through capillaries that liquid and then drain it into the guts. So lots of swelling, all the swelling is lack of lymphatic function. All the swelling is inflammation plus lack of lymphatic function. So when you deal with pain and swelling, which is often, one of the things you intend to open the vessels and help drain in the negative things. In many cases, uh, when a person is swollen, you also speak to them about their diet and about what do they watch. Because the main message I give to them, if you're swollen, how much of TV do you watch? And uh, do you watch commercial free streaming videos or you watch the news? And uh, what do you eat? So what happens with, especially with fat people and swollen people, is there, it's pure, pure um, energy talk. Their Negative energy that comes, negative vortexes of energy that come from television, which is plenty, is combined with toxins in the food and gets stuck in their cells, especially in fat. The fat is the blob of negative energy where you kind of dump there all negativity you get from television and uh, the world combined with fat. All right, so so again, you want to drain that out. So and I suggest stop stop watching the news, filter them out, and if 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 negative news come to you, let them go through. Don't store them, release them, release them. You cannot do anything about it. So why to keep it in your belly? And um, also study your diet. Become a dietitian experiment with, empirically experiment with your diet until you get, learn how to release things and how to not to store the fat in, in your body. I mean, in Western culture, in English-speaking culture, it's, it's a big issue. <sighs> okay, so coming back to the eyes. So if the person has big eyes, you hold 
very, very often. You hold the hand, you scan, if you can feel energies, after you warm up, you scan the, the energies. Often you feel the pull from, from the eyes because the eyes are absorb so much negativity and and you wish to heal the eyes so one of the ways is just to hold your hands above the eyes like that and sometimes it's hard to hold the hands in the air especially if you work for a while so you know I, I like that so one hand holds another it's kind of more stable easier to hold to, to hold and then uh, there is another trick there is another trick that's a Reiki. I have on the Reiki bed, I have a clean, relatively clean uh, sheet. So the trick is to use the sheet of a regular sheet. You cover the bed with the extra sheet, right? And and then you, 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 clean sheet. You cover the eyes of the client like that. And you put your hands, you know, don't block their nose, they have to breathe. So the nose sticks here, and you just work on the eyes, on on the mouth, and it's a clean and nice. Our uh, Reiki passes fine. You don't have really, and there is a touch sensation. So altogether, it works great. There is electric. Hmm, I'm no electric contact doesn't go here, but there is some sort of sensory contact that goes here. There is some resonance uh, from the touch, and very often you also feel the vibrations, physical vibrations. Part of the vibrations you feel is very physical within your fingers, within your palm, and the vibrations can be like shh, very soft, soft. And recently, like yesterday, I did, um, I did tons of Reiki. It was like about 10 people 40 minutes each. It was like, I guess, biggest I ever did. Uh, on 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 a Son Festival, I, I had a booth, basically free Reiki. It was great. So um, there was there was a person, yes, a client, which very healthy one, but basically the head was completely blocked. The energy just didn't flow, and it's it's okay. It's very often that the person is so closed, you do, can't. They don't allow you to get in. So if they don't allow, you don't push. It is you respect their free will. If they're blocked, that's fine. You work on whatever is open. So when I put the put the hands on the belly, the the energy was great. It was good exchange. They took energy. They and it's always an exchange. So it it felt good. And that's what you do. You go through different parts of the body and see where the energy feel uh, energy is needed and that's where you feel that you have to stay. You develop this intuition. Some place is absolutely cold, you don't even bother to work on it. Then you keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And at some place it's a great exchange and that's uh, where you where you stay. And sometimes you, you know, it goes so well you stay there like for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is extreme but maybe 15 minutes. And sometimes it is flow so well that you start feeling that you become drained. And if you become drained, it's your responsibility to stay healthy. You don't have to give away your energy. You know, it's not even healthy for the patient if you if you if you are not healthy. So you ask your guides, you ask your intuition, how long should I stay? And usually if the question comes to mind, how much longer should I stay, it means you have to start wrapping up. So you sort of wrap up your, maybe it might take a few seconds, maybe it takes a lot of seconds. Sometimes you, the pain comes so fast you have to just like disconnect. And you kind of do exercise and that exercise comes from Qigong and Tai Chi. It's Tai Chi. Uh, Qi and Reiki, Qi, Qi is the same word. And, Ki is Japanese form of Chi, so Reiki, healing energy or healing light, and Chi gone. I forgot what gone is, but Chi is the same word as Ki. All right, so in uh, Tai Chi, you just wash yourself like that. You breathe in, and then you push down your energy all the way through like that. And then you push it down, and you kind of wash with new energy. So it's a good refreshing sort of 
slow, good refreshing way. And then you, you can come back and continue your healing. It's okay. And if you have to step out to the restroom, that's fine to say, I'll be back. Just, you know, bear with me, I will be back. Or take your time, I will be back. And it is just fine to disconnect temporarily and continue. Or sometimes if you need help, you know, there are other healers around. That often happens in Reiki share. You just grab someone else, give me a hand, and there is two people working on the same person. Okay. Next. Um, so you go. So I was was on the belly of of the of the person, like that, and it felt great. And what was interesting, the belly was warm and giving energy, good energy. But the ribs, the ribs, and there is a diaphragm under the ribs. You know, the body is divided into upper part diaphragm and the bottom part will like guts. So the diaphragm started sucking sending me the messages of negative energy. There was sort of a collection of negative experience, which feels different. It feels like, like, bzz, bzz, bzz. And like, so that finger here and this finger here felt, the border of my hands felt like the energy was going under the ribs. And uh, and that's, you know, you get used to that. When you, person, t you know, it's, it's not a shame to ask person where it hurts, and when you put hands there, you feel that it feels different. It's like bzz, 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 instead of good energy. Especially when you do it on yourself, you also are familiar. You put a, your hands on your part that hurts, and you again, you feel that bzz, bzz, bzz. And as it works, like sometimes it's 10 minutes, and then it kind of slows down and becomes warm and relaxed, and, uh, and that is it. As the... It's it subsides usually, not always. There are cases when, when um, you help, but your help is not sufficient to completely remove the problem, and it is okay. Uh, sometimes you're not supposed to remove it. In other cases, again, um, it's not your responsibility to fix things. You know, in Western medicine, a person comes to you. And uh, the question is, can you fix it? How much will it cost? And how fast will it be fixed, right? And in Eastern medicine, it's uh, the healer is only a channel. It's only the helper, only the assistant. It is up to a patient to change in a way that heals. So. I give the advice, I give their energy, and then that's my responsibility. I pass the, the advice, pass the energy, and then it's up to them to accept it and to get healed, right? All right, so when I start, my intention is, my intention is to bring them to a special Reiki state, Reiki state. And as you get Reiki, you learn this Reiki state yourself, so you know what state it is. It's basically is an assisted meditation, a guided, hand-guided assisted meditation. Basically, I shift them to a certain level, not too high, not too little, but I shift them to a Reiki level when they become a little bit spaced out. And in some cases, there is a curve. In the beginning, they kind of feel that their thoughts become little scattered, little scattered. I mean, they become less important. They, they're still there, but they're kind of relaxed. And then uh, in most cases, people just shift to the other level where they can, basically they sleep. They're in a dream state. They still feel that somebody works on them or they're completely absent. They know it depends on the person. And you can see by their face where they are. You know, with experience, you can see where they are. And then they come back before the end of the session. Like, so first half of the session, like 20 minutes, they are somewhere else. And the next 20 minutes, they are back. So they they move, but they, they don't speak. And don't force them to speak unless they, you know, they are ready. Because if you start speaking, you get out of this Reiki state. In Reiki state, you control your breathing often. You mm, can even make a, some some sign if you wish to but you don't want to speak because you wake up. 
So I bring them to Reiki state and I work on them in that Reiki state. And at some person, if I feel like, like they are back, mentally back, I suggest if you want to speak, you can speak. And then we continue the conversation. There is a conversation in the beginning, a silence with the music, and then there is a conversation at the end. That's my typical session. All right, and then I keep moving to other positions, and then uh, sometimes, like that, is one position very good. Another position is around the ears. It's it's, I don't touch. I kind of hold the hands, and that is very different because when you don't touch, you feel the energy much different, much more purified. There is no mix of sensation of physical and energetic. When you hold the hands in the air and there is no wind around, you feel the, only the energies and not and not the physical touch, right? And uh, and you kind of induce this Reiki hmm, energy, energy between the two hands and it feels like you just feel it flowing basically, you feel it flowing, you feel a little blow here and there and feel it flowing and that's again the way to um, to bring a person to a Reiki state. And they don't have to do it for a while, for a long time. Sometimes it is one minute, sometimes it's five minutes, but sometimes it feels so great, especially if the person, very often like a person is either sick or healthy. And here in Chicago, it's surprising to me, but my way come so many young people who are absolutely healthy and they come to Reiki not because they, they feel sick, Sometimes they feel stuck in their spiritual world. Sometimes they feel depressed. Sometimes they feel anxious. But in many cases, it's just perfectly healthy people. They just want come for the experience. They want to unite with Reiki energy. They, I mean, that's the first step to, step to spirituality for them. So when you have a, a healthy person, for me, it is a way of giving them assisted meditation to lift them up to the level and when they remember this level, Reiki state level, then they can go to this meditation Reiki state level by themselves. So, so for me, it is teaching them the Reiki state vibration. It, by itself, it is absolutely valuable. And after a few sessions, when you get that, you also can learn it and then you can shift it to it at will. So at your meditations, you just say, I want to go to the Reiki state and you go there and then you come back. And usually, Sometimes you don't want to come back, but you basically you are dragged back by your higher self because you need to get back to life. All right, and then you go through your other positions, and then at the end there is that sort of closing closing procedure, which usually I do faster. It's like one minute, but basically I put my hands back, and the only thing I do I intend to close up. I close the session. Yeah, that's it. I don't even have a better imagery for that other than, you know, closing the doors, closing whatever I open in the beginning. So in the beginning, I bring them to Reiki state and open them. At the end, I close them. You can, you know, do some some movements where you close, like some, some practitioners actually close the doors, close the doors, imaginary doors. But... Um, uh, that's what you do, you kind of wrap it up. Uh, another thing about wrapping up is uh, it's called brushing. You go over the patient and you sort of brush the energies. And I used to do that, it's fun. Uh, I also used to drum and clap around. I go three circles uh, clockwise around the person with a drum. Some of the drums are absolutely great, especially these big Reiki drums, like like it's bigger than shaman's boobin, uh, shaman's hand drum, and produce a very low, beautiful, pure, pure sound. So going with that sound is a nice wash up. But basically, um, I got an advice from one of the practitioners that brushing is sort of messing up whatever you already built. So if you build certain structures around the patient and you're happy with that creation, you don't want to kind of wipe it. You want to keep it as is. So I think just closing with intention to close maybe is more gentle uh, than brushing up. Um, my teacher usually does that first brushing and then 
imaginary blanket close over the patient. And I think that's the blanket is okay. So so the close in part. So these are sort of dances, some ritual things which allow you to go through the through the session, kind of kind of um, focus your attention on certain things. You move hands, you move the energies, and that allows you to to focus your attention. But that focus is more important, really, than than what you do. Like the whole Reiki session, can you can stand with open arms, and that would be sufficient. The energies will, will move just as well. Like sometimes if I feel that it's too painful to hold the energies on the patient or by some reason I'm not supposed to hold my hands, I just stand like that and and you can do Reiki like that. You imagine the energy just going where it's supposed to go. And here is my illustration I learned it recently. It was like a month ago, two months ago. I was, I already told the story, but I think it's very good illustration. I was at the... Um, a Reiki share. Reiki share is like we had four beds. There were four people, patients. You know, it's a free event. Three, th uh, three patients on four beds, Reiki tables, and th uh, four practitioners doing some sort of Reiki or similar techniques. Like there was a, a mixture of different things, like kind of a point massage and flexible things, but very soft, very energetic. And <clears throat> I was. I, my patient was in front of me. I was uh, holding the hands above, and it's a good place to be. It's like whole body. The energy knows where to go, and I was holding my hand, and it flew really well, and it flows well now actually. And at some point, my hand just jumped like that, just jumped, and you know that really happens to me. That hand jumped that that much. Sometimes it three trembles like something is pushing it but but really jumps with it far. I opened my eyes and I saw on another bed a patient uh, lifted her head to look at, at the clock at, on the wall. So because she moved my hand jumped. So you understand how connected our energies are and how far they, they go. The whole room was filled with energies and when something changes in that mechanism in this clock uh, interconnected clock of wheels of whatever vortexes, another piece has to adjust. That's how I understand it. So the energies go pretty far. I guess I will share with you another experience. So so I sometimes I, I have their clients who are autists and this time it was a about 14, 15 years old um, autistic, very anxious, very energetic, very uh, with a lot of impatience uh, young lady. Uh, and and usually when you have autistic parents it means that the parents are also very controlling and also somewhat abnormal. They're normal but they're borderline. And um, what is important is that her top, her top chakra was hugely widely open. Like normally you feel some energy far from the head, but but this was like many times stronger. And I just, you know, I was measuring, I think she was laying down on, on a Reiki bed. I was measuring how far it goes and it just, if I go all the way to the wall, maybe a couple of yards, it was still very strongly felt. It was too open and that's why she's autistic and impatient because any people around she absorbs whatever energy is there and negativity is not filtered so she gets disturbed by anything that is around her. Um, and I, I don't know, I intended to close a little bit to help filtering but really you can't really rewire the whole person at once. You might wish to do a little bit of help but you don't want to rewire the whole person it's uh, maybe it's not what you're supposed to do like sometimes um, the chakras so you know the chakras right the 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 the, the root chakra uh, is connecting you to the very basic 
understanding of the life, very basic. It's survival, food, uh, connection to the earth, replication, multiplication, reproduction, very basic things, uh, secretion, all, all the basic things, right? And um, it, it is red color. So when you ask, when I ask, usually I connect to the person. When they come, I put them, again, this, that's my person, that's my patient. I offer them to lay down, uh, ask them you know, if they're comfortable, move the pillow a little bit so it's comfortable. I like to put the pillow in a way it kind of stretches the spine so it, it's under the neck and the little pushes a little up, like the pillow which pulls a little up. And then sometimes you offer them the pillow under the knees so the legs are sort of in comfortable position. Some people just feel uncomfortable to lay, lay straight. So that's a typical Reiki setup. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a Reiki table, can be any massage table or any table or the bed is fine except, you know, it's really hard to bend down. The only reason you have a table lifted up is so you don't have to bend down. My table is very tall because because I'm tall and for me bending down is just uncomfortable. So they lay down and sometimes they need, you know, people who are not moving really well or short people, they have, need a stool to climb on the bed. They lay down, you ask them if they're comfortable, if they're warm, if they need a blanket. And blanket is just fine because Reiki can go through the blanket or sometimes you can put hands under the blanket if you have to. And then I put my hands in my upside down Vulcan mind, mind melt position and I start talking to them and sometimes they are talkative and I listen and I ask questions and if they go in the wrong direction I say you know let's come back to that question because I need to understand that I don't need to understand that uh, and um, and sometimes they're not that talkative but usually it is sufficient for me you know uh, to know their date of birth so I know the astrology sign, the main zodiac sign. And for me it is important because like Leo's are different from Aquarius, blah, blah, blah. I kind of tune into their energies and their karmic role in their in life. <sighs> I wouldn't go into that direction right now. And the second thing is uh, I ask their favorite color. And if a person's favorite color is black, it means they're depressed. It means they're depressed. If the person doesn't have a favorite color, it means they're completely confused. If they have many favorite colors, it could be all right. But if there is one dominant favorite color, pay attention to which color it is. Usually that's a dominant chakra. And if it is a red chakra, Another indication that the red chakra is dominant is uh, you're wider in that area, in the root, in the lower butt, lower butt area. It's it's very stable, very grounded person if you're wider down below. And that shape of the body was studied, by the way, is even studied in medical school. They, they correspond the shape of the body uh, to certain patterns of the health. All right, the second chakra is more like animal chakra. It's animal, simple, simple animal things like competition, hierarchy, and those things. And third chakra, and second is sexual chakra, right? Um, and then third chakra is, is uh, a solar chakra, solar plexus chakra, right, under the ribs. And it is old humanity. So old biblical humanity, even old humanity right now, the one which is still focused on money, uh, social, all social values, uh, politics, that's third chakra. And again, if it's bulging here, the person is good in that old humanity thing. And then the fourth chakra is the heart. And the humanity, the Homo sapiens, is moving right now from the third chakra to the fourth chakra. We are shifting through the veil, and the veil is the diaphragm. There is a belly with guts and stuff. 
divided from the heart, separated from the heart by the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is the veil. When we shift from old humanity to the new humanity, it is going to be humanity of love and telepathy and empathy. So shifting your focus from here to there, and the Superman has a big chest, and Superwoman has a, even a bigger chest, right? And which is a heart, right? So having a small belly and a big chest and working from the heart, from compassion, is the future. That's why this models are actually the models for the future. They are shifted to the heart. Uh, tons more can be said, but it is a green chakra, a green chakra. The heart is green. I don't see the colors, but, you know, if, if the person tells, the, tells you that they are, their favorite color is green, you pay attention to their heart chakra. They, that's how they change the world. If you change the world through, through all social values, through hierarchy, you would work through this orange, orange uh, solar plexus, sinip chakra. If you want to change the world through love, that you would work through green chakra. And if you change your world through environment, through your voice, that would be the throat chakra. So people who are great speakers, often their favorite color is blue, which is the color of the throat chakra. And then the purple, and the purple again, uh, is, is purple is people who are focused on on God and spirits. And the difference between this and top, this is the third eye or brain or whatever you want to all third. Usually it's called third eye chakra. But basically everything like eyes and the third eye and the brain and the lobe is everything covered in the third eye chakra. So that's your mind. So people with purple, they are very purple. They are into the mind, but they also are into gods, into the connection to God. And sometimes just through working, feeling the, 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 going through the positions of the hands on different parts of the body and scanning through different chakras, you identify which chakra is strongest. And there was a patient again where everything else was not working strongly. It was kind of <coughs> normal, nothing extraordinary. And then this one was just super strong. You can't see me, but I just move out. Um, the crown chakra was super strong, and I said, you know, I said to them, it's, you know, their connection to God is very strong. They, they just go to the top level without, without going to any other levels. And I said exactly what, what they do at, at work. They skip all managers. They go right to the top level, and that's, you know, their style. So uh, you can tell a lot just by, by energy flow uh, about, the, uh, about the person. Uh, any more questions? No. No, not here. All right, let's me then switch the gears. So I think I, I told you about, yeah, uh, the, the ending of the the ending of the treatment. Uh, again, the consultation, the spiritual consultation, which I do, is not included in uh, Reiki training. It is an extra. Traditional Reiki could be done completely silent. The only thing is what you really pro what traditional Reiki practitioners pronounce is first they say may touch you, and then they say, you know, I disconnect from you. That, that's all they do. Everything else could be done silently. And um, you can do that if you wish. Um, I, I like giving a spiritual consultation because in most cases I uh, feel that people come to me more for spiritual answers and spiritual, spiritual upgrades than, than for healing because the healing Usually it's a chronic thing. In one session, I cannot give them 
completely complete recovery. I can help them a little bit, but then they have to change their thought patterns, their behavior patterns to not to get the same sickness again. And that's what I could help them a little bit by teaching them, but then they have to do it themselves. So that is a big understanding. Like I learned it from myself. I usually, you know, come to a Reiki practitioner, Reiki healer. They heal me. I feel that I carry that healing for a while. And then I come back to my traditional, you know, disbalance, which comes from my patterns of how I deal with life. And and then um, and then I gradually evolve to to protect myself and close this. So so because I pass through that, I I can I can teach them that. So when a person comes to you and they um, there is a chronic sickness, uh, there are multiple reasons for it. Usual or multiple suspects. The main one is usually spiritual. It means that they are somewhere stuck on their spiritual development, on their spiritual path. And the main healing for that, the main underlining cause would be spiritual. Usually, if the person is stuck, they make their choices, and they make their choices in a way they that bring them to the dead end, they get messages, and the messages sometimes are very sublime, and sometimes they're very direct. Like, here is an example of very direct messages. Um, that's my beautiful, well, a wonderful message. Uh, you get them from children, from people who, who, are, who you barely know. Like, yesterday I got a message from from an old man who is kind of, What's that word? Um, people treat them as annoyance because he likes to talk. But he gave me perfect message, especially because it wasn't the first time I got it. I got it the second time. First time I got it from another person who would say they speak too much. So one person gave, gave it to me in Russian, and the second time, oh, again, it was in Russian. But but one from Russia and one from America gave me the same message, exactly word to word, the same message. So I have to pay attention. Already paid attention to it, but but the messages are, you know, you are supposed to go there, you know, and repeat, you know, you go there. People, random people, like email messages, random advertisements. You just see it on the street, like written in front of you. If if you miss all of those messages, then you might get pain. It's not that they send you pain; they just stop healing you from the pain you induce in yourself. But there are spirit guides your higher self and they need to push you gently in a certain direction and if you are stubborn you don't want to go there then um, they just stop healing you and then you get pain and you come to a Reiki healer and a Reiki healer gives you the same message and maybe then you will listen especially because you you are in a special Reiki state where you're lifted up where you're when you are a child basically on the bed with kind voice of a Reiki healer and the, the hands on your head and you can also sometimes you can pull if there is a hair there you can pull the hair back and it is it just opens it it brings the trust and it brings the gentleness it brings that kindness and the person just trusts more and of, of course you have to correspond to that trust but basically you deliver uh, the highest messages you feel are appropriate. You don't want to deliver the messages which are not appropriate. Again, which messages do you want to deliver? You cannot teach a person everything you know for multiple reasons. One, they can take a good message and hurt themselves. It happens over and over. I just see that, you know, I give them obvious answer and they take that answer and hurt, hurt themselves. And... Uh, Another reason, it's their lessons, their lessons. You, you don't want to give them all answers at once because they wouldn't understand and they need to learn them by themselves. But obvious things where they get stuck, the next step to unstuck and go back on the path of learning, that's what is appropriate. So that's the principle of next step, principle of next step. Talk to them and channel the principle, channel the next step for them. Just in the beginning of the session, ask them nicely, uh, 
usually I don't ask what hurts or what's your health problem. I ask what in a positive way. What are your desires towards health? Or what questions would you have about your spiritual path? Something of that sort. Very simple. And um, and if they don't understand what this question is about, spiritual path, some don't understand. I say, I channel higher spirits, I channel God. Do you have any questions to angels and higher spirits and God? Is there anything else I try to ask them to bring back to you? And usually, Jim just bring them down in person. I don't bring down the words, but often I bring down the answers. And I have to say, I didn't hear it directly, but if I were in your place, that's what I understand. I would do, or I would think that would help, blah, blah, blah. And again, uh, usually, like, how much television do you watch? Stop watching television, watch only on demand, and choose and filter what you watch. <laughs> All right, study dietology and choose and filter what you eat. You know, if the list of ingredients on your food is more than one line, don't eat it. <laughs> All right. Ah. All right, and so that's how we start. Uh, what's, uh, I don't even ask what's your name. Often I don't know the name of the person. <laughs> Jim usually asks what the name, but you know, if it is a health fair, you just, you know, people come through you and never come back. I just give them what they need and they go, I don't know the names. I ask what the day and month of your birth and what is your favorite color? What are your desires towards health? And what are your challenges today, spiritual challenges today? What are your blocks? Where can I bring you any messages? And then I say, you know, now be, you know, I, I got sufficient information. Now I will bring you to meditative state, like a Reiki state. Go as far as you wish to go. I will be guarding you. And when I need to bring you back, I will tell you to that, that you need to come back. And then I say, um, if you become feel like you're a little stiff and paralyzed, don't be scared. That's absolutely normal. That's a, that means that you're in good state. You lifted up your spirit, so it's not in the body anymore. So I can work on the body and etherical body, but but don't be afraid. If you wish to come back, just wish that, and you will be back gradually. Give yourself, say, five minutes to come back in your body, and first you will control your breathing. And you can breathe, and then you can move your toes, and you can move your fingers, and then you gradually don't take your time to come back in the body. Don't rush. Don't be scared. And if the session goes longer than 40 minutes, usually the blood flow on the back of the patient is becoming too, you know, just they have, you know, if they... If the energy flows well, the person is fine. But sometimes, if the person is not very healthy, the blood supply and lymph flow is not very good. So you want to turn them upside down. So when you're already back in their conscious state, you say, and now let's turn you on your stomach and make sure they don't roll off the bed. And then they, uh, when they lay on the stomach, I suggest to them, uh, hug your pillow and put your uh, head sideways, but make sure you're comfortable. You don't have to be like in a straight position upside down. Some people like think that that's what they're supposed to do. Um, but but whatever feels comfortable. Some people feel comfortable like that. Some people like comfort like that, whatever, or like that. In any case, and then I work on their back. Uh, it, if, you, if you have like, if you work more than an hour, that would be a proper thing to do. But for normal Reiki, uh, it's like less, less than an hour, Laying on the back is just fine. Um, then you work and you go through from the head to the bottom and uh, to the feet. And again, if the feet are not too clean, you don't have to touch them. Or you can use the, the sheet again to touch them through the sheet. sheet. And then um, you obviously don't touch you know, the sensitive parts. Uh, if the if you need a closer connection, and if it is appropriate to have a closer connection, uh, connecting hand palm to palm is absolutely great. If you want a closer connection, sensing their pulse here or there or just anywhere on the heart, and synchronizing to, to their pulse is a great idea. 
Uh, music, nice Reiki music is absolutely nice. Um, my favorite is a group which is called 2002, a music for Reiki, and it's it's actually hard to find because 2002 every every album you know there is tons of albums which are number number 2002, but basically that's the name of the group. It's a Reiki music. Uh, if you do it in silence, I really like to chant, uh, and my chanting is like just almost just fine. Om, om is fine, and I also like like uh, chanting different um, Chinese healing sounds, and they go from very high frequency, the highest you can produce, like like the highest, like. And then it goes to low, lower, like then shh, then shh, then then you have to warn that you're doing doing Chinese healing sounds, and then even lower, like like and even lower, like and if you get to the proper state, you can. I cannot do it right now, but but that that French sound. Which is even lower. Stan, can you do that sound? <laughs> Not sure I can do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is a, uh, a dialect of French where they use that sound a lot, so for them it comes natural. <sighs> All right. Well, like, so those sounds. And um, and this actually, if if the the chakra is blocked. If the chakra is blocked, this is great sounds to unblock it. If you really think that unblocking it is appropriate, what is blocked chakra? It's just you know you put the hands over there. On other chakras, you have all the flow, and on that chakra is nothing. And um, if you feel it's appropriate to unblock it, then you might use the sounds at any sequence. And I usually just continuously like like for the breathing. And you do any sequence, and then you feel like one of those sounds just opens it, and you feel oh now it flows, and, and usually confirmation is good. Like you confirm to yourself, and you confirm to the patient, and say, yeah, yes, it works beautifully. Just saying yes to yourself and to the patient. And I got goosebumps, and goosebumps for me usually a sign of spiritual presence. So I think it's also good. So that's how it work. I. I do. I go around several times usually. I kind of skip some points, go around. Uh, also, my favorite is connecting different sides, and because I have long hands, so I can span almost a big person. I can span them from almost the whole body, and I can just can put hands on on different parts of the body and kind of connect them. And it feels good when someone touches you on both sides of the body. You just feel a child again. And again, for me, it is a great way to connect to a person is to imagine them as a child. And I feel like a grandmother. So I, I use my grandmotherly energy to heal. And also, two hands are great when you put it around. So say that's that's a person. I put one under there. So that's a butt. So how do you call it? A waist, under a waist. Just kind of stick it down there, and under on, on one above, and and uh, do it like that. Especially great, it works on people who have smaller bellies because really the energy kind of goes through better. And um, on uh, females in fertile age, I usually work on uh, like this is on the waist, and this is kind of closer, a little below the. On appropriate, not sexually inappropriate, on an appropriate part below their belly where it's uh, this, whatever, how do you call them, the sexual organs. And uh, and I kind of, and usually they, they, they need a lot of healing there. They need a lot of healing. Uh, so, so because, you know, our sex life is so messed up, so, so they need... Um, they take a lot of energy there, and and it feels like it's it's an appropriate thing to do. And then you can hold, keep the hand down below for a longer time because because uh, uh, when you move it around, it kind of disturbs the patient. I don't want them to wake up. Uh, and I move only the top hand on the heart, on the liver, on the liver, on the spleen, 
and if they need a healing on the breast, I just hold my hand above above the breast. And usually you can feel the heart chakra kind of below the breast, heart chakra. It can be anywhere. It can shift up and down, and there is a high heart. So really mapping the seven chakras is hard. I mean, you can find the chakra at any place of the body, actually. And then you hold it around the breast and kind of feel the energy, and sometimes it takes a lot, sometimes it doesn't. But um, you kind of check it out, and it's appropriate to 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 pull out the negativity from there because some people just take a lot of negativity anywhere. So you go through things like back and forth and usually I warm up people first, warm up myself and people first. So when I start feeling the flow, then I go above, already not touching, and I scan. So scanning, I use right hand as a flashlight. I kind of send, send with, with fingers, send this energy. And I scan the person and kind of move around. And you see my hand is not flat. Not like that. No, nothing, nothing tense. It's gentle. And I gently feel the energies, like very slowly, very gently. You don't want to kind of do that because that disturbs the energies. You gently go over the person. And if you feel the, 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 uh, the usually it's... Uh, Sometimes it's a big fat chakra, and sometimes it's just a tiny vortex, a kind of hurricane. No, not a hurricane. The other way, I forgot. A spiral, the vortex, long, long, tiny vortex, and you can feel. And sometimes it's weaker down below, and it's stronger somewhere here. So you find that sweet spot, and you stay on it like that, or like that, or like, like that. And then connecting different organs is great, like connecting. Sometimes say that person has, here's an example, Russians, man, Russian men often have their heart chakra completely blocked. It's not that their heart is not working, it's just a shield of protection. They don't show compassion, they block compassion, they block connection on the heart level. They connect on all other levels, on mental, root, whatever, sexual, but not on the heart level. The heart is completely blocked. And that's the culture, Russian culture just teaches, trains the young males not to feel compassion. And there is a lot of exercises where the trust is broken. The parents teach people not to trust anyone, even the parents. So the broken trust is the blockage of the heart chakra. You, I mean, that, that is so obvious. So, okay, now the person is in America. They can trust people a little more. And, you know, Russians, many many Russian males are untrusting. So, um, it's again, it's a tough decision. Do you really want to open the heart chakra? Maybe it's okay for them to be this way. So, it's a tough decision. You might, if you have a repeating client, you might ask them between the session or in the, in the middle of the session, is it okay if I open your heart chakra? You will, you might feel more vulnerable, but that would be healthier because at the end they have heart problems, right? So it will be healthier. Um, so one of the ways to open heart chakra is just to wish. You put hands and wish it to open. Another way is to use the healing sounds. You, you can put your palms on the male. You can put it like that. On female, you go around the breasts like, like that just because it's unpro more appropriate. And then, uh, or like that, or like that, depending on the size of the breath, or the distance here. So, and then you, are, or on, one under the, one under the patient, on, one above the, on, on the breast. And then you intend, and then you can start using the healing sounds. It's like, Of course, you warn them that you will be doing that because otherwise it will sound creepy. And then uh, after that, you might want to connect their heart to their strongest chakra, which obviously is not heart chakra because it's blocked. And you put your hand on your on their strongest chakra and connect one one with another. Or sometimes the spleen, spleen is on the left and uh, liver on the right. Sometimes you connect the spleen and the heart, sometimes the liver and the heart. And very often, very often, I connect both. Like this, this is what we connect in the spleen and the liver, and kind of 
it's back and forth, back and forth. And often, especially when you work on yourself, you can send the pulsing energy. You you define that pulse. Oh, that's so happy. It feels so happy. Like that pulse, every second a pulse. And you feel like the energy goes between one hand, like a volleyball, like, like Beam, 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 beam. Like you pulse it back and forth, back and forth. Uh, my very good healing friend, they also like, they do vibration. Like like um, old person's hand shake, like you send that shake. And it also wakes it up as in the heart, like shake, a little shake. Again, Jim does a lot of alien Reiki. He will teach you, but basically he uses a lot of silver energy. So he would, would use his fingers here. And he would even press, so it's a little painful. And that is also good. Again, it's uh, you have a lot of flexibility here. Classical Reiki is flat hands. And then you can move and adjust. And whatever you feels good. And if it feels good, just stay there. And until you feel that you it's time to go. And, and for, to me, it's like, is it time to go? Oh, I asked this question, so maybe it's time. No, it's proper to stay longer because it takes so much good energy and it feels happy and that's why we'll stay here longer. <laughs> so that's a lot of improvisation, but um, that's how it goes. And then you wrap it up. You say, you know, we are, we are starting, sometimes I even say that, I'm starting a closing sequence or starting wrapping up. Uh, next few minutes will wrap up. And usually... Like 15 minutes before the, before the wrap up, I start a conversation and keep giving them the messages I got to them, I, I, I got for them. And sometimes the messages are uh, interesting. Often the messages are interesting. Uh, I wouldn't repeat some of the urgent ones, but maybe in the, in the next lesson, you know, some of the messages, you know, sometimes they repeat again, actually. Sometimes it's something about acceptance, but sometimes it's something about you have to pay attention to this, to that, to that. And sometimes it's so obvious the person has to work on a diet. It's so obvious, right? Um, and then when you close, you say, and I'm done, and take your time. And sometimes you really have to tell them take your time because, you know, some people think that take your time means they have to rush off the bed. And actually, actually, it would be better for them, you better say, I have another 15 minutes, take real five minutes to slowly, slowly come back and slowly get up. And usually when they sit, sit on the table, especially if it is a first session, you say, now you got your energy patched, which, is, which it is patched. Be careful, before this patches, before this uh, whole heal completely. You have to be very careful with your energy. Don't break it again because I stitched it, stitched your etheric body, your energy shield, and it's not fully healed, so you have to be careful. Carry it carefully. And one of the images I got from my first healer was, I tell them, imagine that you have a bowl of hot soup. Carry it very carefully for the rest of the day. So you carry your energy, don't spill it. Carry, uh, carry it very carefully for the rest of the day. And then and then you will be back after you sleep. And then your protection, you are not fully protected. Your protection will be back after you sleep. Don't engage in arguments. Don't provoke any negative feelings in others. Don't play active sports, especially competitive sports. Um, don't watch any, don't watch the news for the rest of the day. <laughs> Trust your friends to bring you the news. So that's, that's my usual, usual advice. Um, and, uh, you know, for, for the practitioners, there will be like another advice is how do you keep the patient, how you, uh, offer them appropriate payment plans and stuff like that. But for <laughs> free ones, Jim, do you want to say anything? Oh, no, I was just unmuting because it's about time for me to start talking. Oh. But I'm first going <laughs> to, I just wanted to say, uh, what Max is telling you now is his style of Reiki. I'm going to give you a slightly different version, but it's just, it doesn't mean that his version is wrong. 
And it doesn't mean that his version doesn't work because it does. Because each person will find that their own, there are certain things that work for you and certain things that don't. We're just going to show you and let you know what we do. And some of those things will work for you and some of them won't. And some of them will be comfortable for you and some of them won't. So therefore, uh, when you listen to this, um, when I go into my part, I'm going to uh, work with you personally at the beginning to see where your comfort levels are with yourself because that's something that's very important. Um, we're going to find out where you fit in with yourself and how you feel, how confident you feel about uh, a Reiki and how confident you feel about yourself because that, is, that does have something to do with your healing ability. So, but what, what Max has been telling you, I've been listening off and on. I had some phone calls and things of nature. But he's giving you a really wonderful overview of how to do Reiki in a very fa fantastic way. And his is very classic. And actually, he's added some things to that to personalize it for himself. And that makes it wonderful, too, because it works for him. And when it works for you, that's what you stick with. I mean, not to say that you can't add to it or subtract from it. If things aren't working as well and you find something that works better, that's great. I've been doing Reiki now for three and a half years, and I found that when I started Reiki, I did it much differently than I'm doing it now. But, of course, there's a lot of history in that three years, three and a half years. And the same with Max. When he started to do Reiki, I'm sure it's changed over the years, hasn't it, Max? Absolutely. So you're going to find that you're more comfortable with some hand positions than the others. You're going to find you're more comfortable dealing with um, certain kinds of um, movements and touchings and, and, and things that uh, other people may not uh, relate to as well. But if it works for you, that's what's important. If it, if it resonates with how you are supposed to do your Reiki and the energy is working, which we'll talk about that too, um, we, it's the way you should do it. So that's all I had to say. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, Reiki is customizable, yes. You deal with conscious energy and it's your duty to do it in the best possible way. The intention matters absolutely. Uh, purity, purity of intent matters. Again, what, what do you do if um, if you feel that sexual attraction to a person uh, interferes with your healing? Or what do you do if you feel that sexual repulsion from a person interferes with your healing, right? <laughs> um, or if, if the business if the business interferes with him, if, if the thought how much, you know, should I charge them or something of that sort interferes with the healing, or if you're just worried about something else, what do you do, right? Uh, a prayer helps, obviously, absolutely. Um, imagining a, uh, a person being a child, like reducing them in age, uh, Richard Bartlett, it calls time, time travel, just count nine, eight, to one and imagine them getting younger uh, helps a lot. Um, the purpose, why do we really do that? Because you're a healer. Everyone is a healer and you are specifically doing the healing here. You tune into the healing wave and focus on what is best for the person. Sometimes you have to understand the person may not want to be healed and you have to respect their wish. But the next step you still might want to give them the next step. Sometimes you have to wrap it in a way that would be appropriate for them to understand. Sometimes you have to think a lot hard how to give them the message. And sometimes the message that you give them is you give them without the words. There was a case when, again, it was my first discovery that uh, Russian men have a uh, blocked heart. So I realized that and I worked on their heart on that person's heart and then I didn't say anything when he came out he started speaking and he said and what I did what I did actually I brought all other chakras similar his heart is in the middle I brought all other chakras together on their heart it was 
root and crown, brain, fluoridae, and sexual or sacral, uh, the throat and solar. I kind of put my hands over them and intended the energy to go. So when he came out, he said, uh, in my mind, there, was, there were two sw swans. Swan is a spirit of swan, right? Two swans. And they formed the, the number two, and they came together, forming a heart. That's what he said. I didn't say anything. It was my intention, and it translated, because we were linked. It translated directly to... Um, to the message. I didn't even have to give him a message. The message already passed through. <laughs> but my conscious involvement was, was essential. All right. What else do we need to know? No. Jim, if uh, in, a, in, a, in the introduction there was um, Skype ch chime sounding, so make sure your, your Skype is, is off. I turned it off immediately. Thank so you. Perfect. You yep. haven't heard anything. Have you heard anything since? No, not, not now. Only in the beginning. No, I turned Skype off. Nice, thank you. A uh, couple more things I need to cover. Um, so who do you invite? Obviously, you can invite Reiki Masters to help you. You might invite Reiki Energy by itself. Know that it is conscious and it knows where to go. So, so that is obvious. Then sometimes I feel that the energy doesn't flow through my hands, but at the end I discover that the patient felt absolutely perfect flow of the energy and not even where I worked. So they tell me very often that they feel more than my hands on their body, more than two hands. So other spirits and my alien friends work in parallel with me and just trust that even if you don't feel that you're doing the right job, they, they most likely they do their job absolutely great. So that that is just a way to know, and as you go, you will get lots of confirmation that it is true. Invite. Usually my formula for invitation is um, I stand behind the person and I say, I invite higher healing energies to work through my hands. Something that simple. Or I invite higher energies to help healing here. Or I invite my alien my, my healing friends to to help the healer to, to help the healing process something very simple and um, and I know who is working with me Jim is talk I'm talking to them through Jim and through other uh, through the patients who are channeling or who get the messages so I know I'm I'm working with human and unknown human and alien spirits who help the healing so so that's <laughs> that's uh, the short summary of 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 the galactic component of it. So basically, um, you invite them to work by themselves, but also sometimes they channel, and Jim often channels them when they when we do the Reiki. So we actually start making the sounds which they channel through us. We actually start make, sending the energy that they send through us. It's conscious invitation and conscious channeling, channeling of specific healing energies. And the last thing, in the last minute, is um, how do you find the practice? Uh, between today and next Monday, uh, I suggest it would be very nice if you practiced. And the final certificate which you get, we will make sure you got enough practice to, um, to, to get practice, to get the energy flowing through your hands, to get initial initial progress. Uh, if you don't, if you practice and you don't feel energy flowing, it's okay, but at least you practice. And in most cases, you would feel, you would get one or another confirmation or wonderful confirmations. We do two uh, initiations, two attunements. We do one today in uh, less than a couple hours. I will come back and Jim and I will do the attunement. And um, you'll offer the hands and we will place the symbols, the, the first symbol in your hands, so you basically, you get the initial boost. And then uh, go and practice. Um, obviously, the practice on yourself, number one. 
that is a wonderful practice, just uh, sending in the energy. Uh, then the meditation, laying down, sitting or laying down and uh, placing the hands like that, just a little below the ribs, placing the one hand on the heart, one below. I usually do right hand on the heart and my fingers right here go under the ribs, closer to the liver and here they kind of open but it's it's very flexible wherever you are uh, feel comfortable to, to go sometimes the hands just don't want to go that they want to stretch so one of the position I put them right here like that and uh, that's that closes my heart chakra heart chakra goes to my root chakra right I send energy to the root chakra um, and that's that's a nice nice circular movement of energy in both directions um, and when you do that in t uh, close your eyes and invite again healing energies to help your healing and to help you learn Reiki and expect the miracles right expect them to come I usually wear my uh, sleeping mask and uh, noise blocking headphones earmuffs eye mask and ear muffs, sleeping mask and ear muffs, uh, and close the door, make sure my phone, there is a nice application on Android, it's called Mute Ringer, so for 45 minutes the ringer wouldn't ring, but better it comes back to the, uh, to the life, so, and also if I need to hurry, I have an appointment, I put a timer also, so I, I have fully protected time where I know that my phone will take care of not ringing now, but bringing me back. And usually my spirits also bring me back in, in proper time, so I, I don't miss an appointment. And so I have about half an hour of quiet time. And 15 minutes, some thoughts go through my mind, and usually I allow them to go because I think maybe they are brought by spirits, so I don't really have to discard them. But basically I don't focus on simple things, I focus on higher things. And after about 15 minutes, the light comes, often, not always, but often, and the light is usually with the presence of the spirit, and um, <clears throat> the pain goes away, I shift to the different dimension, and usually when I recognize that it comes, I say in my mind, hello, welcome, and sometimes I even know who is coming, like the day after uh, Usui, Mikao Usui came through gym, it was recently, like four days ago, in my meditation, Mikao came. I, I, it was so obvious. I was so happy to see him. Uh, not, I didn't see the face, but I saw the light, and it was. It felt Mikao visiting me. Th thank you, Mikao. And um, and then and then you might feel the energy, the buzz. Sometimes it's like, shh, sometimes it's like, dzz, dzz, dzz. and sometimes you can even play with the energy and kind of let it. Uh, one another one and it kind of shifts between the two hands like and the pulse and that, that pulse is not is not the pulse of the energy uh, not the pulse of the heart not the pulse of the breathing and you breathe deeply and peacefully but it is something else which is which is most healing and you know, intend the, the energy when you breathe in you take the energy from the universe the healing energy and you send it to the place which needs it most and imagine a golden globe, golden ball of healing light to grow there. So that you practice on yourself, you find volunteers from your family and friends and it can be laid down, it can be sitting, it can be any position um, and animals are wonderful. You know if it is an impatient animal you might Pat them one hand while sitting in Reiki with another hand. And if the physical sensation distracts, you might lift your hand so it's your hand is above the animal. You can send the energy from the distance to people. Uh, you can send the energy to different places on, on the ground to the earth. Like just pl simple like that is absolutely great standing energy position. Just sending energy down to the lake, to the river, to the stream, to the tree, you can place your hands like that or like that or like that, like the best is like that of course, it's more comfortable and keep in mind that the tree, the the organism, the consciousness is uni unified, the tree is the forest, is the, 
the entity, conscious entity. The tree is just one of the cells of this entity. So send energy to the whole forest. Uh, so practice every day and um, tell us uh, and read the book. Uh, I will make sure you get the link on the website and also in email. Uh, it's a wonderful book I, when, written by someone else. It's uh, two Malonis wrote it and um, it has almost everything I wanted to put in the book. I, first I wanted to write it but when I read the Malonis book it has absolutely everything you need for 81 and extras. I removed unnecessary things but uh, necessary things are there and also I added their galactic part which is about the alien energies and it, it's on the, on the last part it's like two or three pages at the end it's a condensed uh, metaphysical and galactic component read it as well and Kim will make sure you to remind you to read those and at the next lesson we will we'll, um, discuss the things, Bring, prepare your questions and I will prepare my questions and we'll go through the questions and discuss what you need to know for the Reiki 1. And uh, today we'll do attunement in about an hour and an uh, hour and a half and next time we'll do the second attunement so you will be double uh, double, uh, double tuned and um, and hopefully after that if every, everybody passes we will do, we'll send you the certificates and you will be done. And Kim will take, make sure um, the payments. Um, so we pro offer payment plans. We receive the payments through Reiki at humancolony.org. That's working fine. So we received some payments already. If you didn't pay, uh, send the payments. And uh, we also uh, organize for those who didn't make it to this session but signed up, or for those who want to uh, to study afterwards, study themselves using our videos. Later we'll do catch-up session, we'll do attunements and we'll also give you um, certificates after we make sure you know everything and you understand everything and you are attuned properly and you got your practice. And how you find your local community? Um, Google around and um, email around but meetup.com usually in every country except Russia has, um, has uh, a nice Reiki share. So Reiki share is a free place where you come and get a treatment, and also you can put your hands on on other people and and get into the community and uh, start sharing. Usually it's like 15 minutes, half an hour sessions where when uh, you take turns and and an absolutely wonderful thing to do. And we uh, <clears throat> start now and uh, at least find the schedule for those. Usually it happens once a month in different healing centers and you should be able to find one not far from you. All right and here I give a microphone to Jim and Jim I will see you at uh, whatever in about hour 20 minutes to for, for that. Yeah. Okay first of all I think everybody needs a break. Um, they need a you need to go get some water, stand up, stretch, uh, get comfortable again. You're it's it's just time for you to um, make yourself feel good. So do that for the next five or ten minutes and uh, go to the bathroom or whatever it is that you need to do so that you're all comfortable for the next session. For the next part. I'll okay, go Jim. Okay? Alrighty then. Ah, I see we have Joe's back. Do you prefer Jill? Is everybody back? Yep. Yep. Is Stan back? Yes. Very good. All right. This part, you'll find out that I have a very different style of teaching from uh, Max and also some different styles of doing Reiki than Max. But like I said, it doesn't mean that it's not as good or, but it might show you a different way to approach Reiki in some ways. It might be just more uh, better for you. More better. I don't think that's proper, but we'll go with it. Um, first, I want to find out about you personally. Uh, well, Doug, we'll start over here since it's, it goes Doug, Jill, and then Stan. So we'll talk to, I'll talk to Doug first. Doug, I wanted to know what makes you interested in Reiki? What is it that brought you to this Reiki class? I was watching some uh, YouTube videos of you and Max, 
uh, some of the first ones you did uh, channeling, and it looked like you were the guys were doing Reiki, and you talked about Reiki. And yes, so we were. And, took some, uh, and so I went and took some Reiki and had some Reiki done on myself, uh, and that's what kind of got me interested in. And did you feel it when it was being done to you? Sorry, you broke up a little bit there. Uh, did you feel anything when the Reiki was being done to you? Oh, yeah, I felt um, very relaxed. And afterwards, right when I was getting out of it, I felt uh, like the person was talking too fast. It took me a while to kind of get the information. It was, you know, kind of sleepy, sort of, like that. When they were when they were actually performing the Reiki on you, did you feel anything coming from their hands? Um, I felt them touching my body. Um, I did not yeah. feel anything coming from their hands. Okay, cool. All righty. And so that interested you in wanting to heal other people? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And Joe, what is your experience? Why did you? What Thank brought you. you here today? I prefer Jillian, uh, Jim. What? I prefer to be called Jillian. Oh, Jillian. I'm sorry. Yeah, Very good. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I've been interested in healing and spiritual things for a long time. Um, I, th I think it was about four or five years ago when I was going to originally do a, um, a Reiki course, um, but I've been lot to lots of um, spiritual fairs with crystals and things like that. Yeah. Um, I can't think it's a while since I actually thought I'd like to do it, but I've all, I've always, I know if I've had um, readings with mediums in the past, they've often said, oh, you you could do healing, you know, so it's always been in the back of my mind. Okay. Um, but I've also, um, I think it was probably May time, I just happened to see you and Max you know, on YouTube, I, I found you the same way. I don't know how, but obviously I was drawn to it. Um, and I've always kind of would prefer, I'd love to be able to actually make a living by doing something that I love, you know, and healing people. Um, so, because I watch all of your webinars and things like that, I thought, ah, maybe now is the right time, you know. Excellent. So here I am. Excellent. Thank you very much. And you know, it was Reiki that brought me to channeling. And I didn't even know what channeling was until I found it. It found me. So, but I, and Reiki found me as well. They took me to Reiki and I loved it because I was depressed after I lost my job. And now, uh, five years later, but uh, five years after I lost my job, here I am. But three year, it's been three and a half years since I discovered Reiki and was started doing it about two and a half months after I started feeling it. So um, I'll tell you that a little more of that story later. Yeah. And Stan, what brings you here today? I, I can't really explain. I, I felt a, a pull toward Reiki, so here I am. Uh, it's uh, yeah. It started from curiosity, and uh, you know that uh, now that there is this opportunity to take the class, I'm I'm here. Okay, very good. Thank you. And let me let me ask you. Uh, this first part is going to be about preparing yourself for Reiki. Um, there's things that you can do to prepare yourself. It's not anything to be nervous about. Everyone has the ability to do Reiki. But everybody has Reiki in their body in different amounts and intensities or their ability to do it. Some people don't realize that they are healers until they discover that this, there's this energy running through them and then they become great healers. So you may actually become a great healer. And it has a lot to do with your intent and what you want to do with your life, too, also. And your intent on what you want to do in healing for other people. So I think that has a lot to do with um, your Reiki abilities. I want you to hold your hands out like this. 
Feel, feel, feel the energy that comes into your cupped hands. Can you feel that? Now, take a second. I'll be quiet. Can you feel energy coming into your cupped hand? Yeah. Yep. That is your natural Reiki ability of serving energy from the human universe. Okay? And so you, if you can feel that, you're a Reiki healer. Mm. Can everybody feel that? Yes, yes. All three of you? Yeah. Excellent. I was now, actually that, yes. I was meditating a couple of nights ago, and, and it often happens, but a couple of nights ago, my hands, they just, all, and all the way up my arms, my hands, they kind of don't feel like the mine, and they feel like the kind of swelling up, and I suppose there's a bit of heat and tingling, but I've, as I've done meditation in the past, I've, I've had a little bit of it, but I don't know whether it was from last week and um, oh, on the on Friday, well, when was it, Thursday, when you channeled uh, Usui, whether that kind of helped, you know, and the energies of the full moon and everything, but it was like, wow, you know, just a couple of nights ago, it was amazing. So I thought, oh, my God, it's happening. You know? It is happening. But let me, uh, you know, now that you brought that up, I have to tell you that now that we're in the age of Aquarius, the Reiki energies are changing, and they will be brought out in new and different ways as time goes on. But Mother Earth's energies are changing, and so we are changing with her, and we have the energies of uh, different, uh, different things are coming into our energy fields, and so we'll be able to use that as well. And uh, Reiki will become a much more powerful means for healing. A much more powerful week. I mean, it's already powerful. I've already been able to help people uh, the, with the help of uh, spirit and aliens to heal um, sciatica or migraine headaches. I had somebody that came to me with insomnia, and they, they to this day, since that day, have not had insomnia ever since. And I've had healed per backache permanently. Um, so... Reiki is getting stronger, but it's all it's also part of your belief system. How how much do you really want to heal these people? What is your intent for yourself as well? Is it that you're that you want people to see you as a Reiki healer or is it that you really want to heal the people? So right now I want you to do a little bit of a self evaluation of why you're doing your Reiki today because it's important that you realize that you are a healer and that that is an important thing to be in this world today. Now Reiki works hand in hand with medicine. I don't know all the things that Max told you, but I'm sure that he mentioned a lot of things that I'm going to mention over again because they are important. And I'll say them differently than he said them, so you might be able to get them into your brain uh, capacity a little differently but prepare yourself when you're going into a Reiki session teach yourself that when you go to a Reiki session this is serious this is helping other people to heal it's it's a wonderful thing it's a beautiful gift everybody has it but you can train yourself to be even better all the time with your intents your meditations and your purposes when I first started to do Reiki, I was a natural Reiki healer. I've been a shaman in many past lives, so it was sort of natural to me. However, the energy has gotten stronger over the years, and that is because the intent for wanting to heal people is greater as well. I really want people to be helped. I really want them to, to feel the energy of the love and the the health and many different things. So ask before you go into a Reiki session, am I prepared? Lord, am I ready to heal? Is my mind in the right place? If it's not, put it in the right place. If it's not, let's let's deal with that right now before we go and meet anybody. Do you understand that? Because I think that's very important. When I get up in the morning and I know that I'm going to have to do Reiki, 
I do my meditations right away to say my thankful thank yous and my and prepare myself for the day and for healing of others and it's just say use me flow through me as as best as you can and I want to open myself up to the healing energies what you're doing there is also opening yourself up for healing not only not only other people but yourself because your intent is good for others what it is coming through you and out through your hands it will also heal you you as as it goes through you if your intents are pure so does anybody have a question about that no nope. now the second thing is when you come to a place where Reiki is have anybody uh, where do you got your Reiki did you go to a Reiki share or did somebody come to your home or did you go somewhere what was your experience of, of that? Where was your Reiki done? Um, the first time... Right, why can I hear myself? What was it stuck? That's it. Um, it was in um, like um, a, a salon where they do mani manicures and that. Um, okay. And then the second one, it was... Um, a group of people got together and they did um, spiritual healing, Reiki, um, psychic reading mediums and that. Okay. So, and you had it done more than once. Which time was your best experience? Um, hmm, they're both quite far apart. I mean the first one I think because it was the first one I had I didn't quite know what to expect and um, I didn't know uh, uh, quite so much but the second one which was probably last year um, I think I probably relaxed a bit more because I knew more about it. Yeah. Right, exactly. I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up. Um, I'm going to go to Doug next. What, what, did you have someone, did you go to one particular person, a Reiki share or a place where they had all different kinds of medias or what? Um, well, <clears throat> I found it on Yelp and uh, I found one near my house and one near my office. Okay. And I, I tried both of them. Okay, cool. What was your best experience? Uh, my best experience was one who, um, she didn't speak a lot. Um, she just said very basics, and we went into it, and it was, uh, it was more calming for me that way. Okay. But the other one wanted to bring out stuff in me, which was not as calming for me. Okay, very good. Stan? I haven't had any session yet, so. Okay. Did you haven't done any? No, no. I, okay, I have one scheduled the end, end of October, but uh, I haven't. Yeah, I'm okay, new. very good. <laughs> All right, let me tell you this. When somebody first comes to you and they know nothing about Reiki and you're going to be working on them, it's very good to let them know up ahead in front, up front, exactly what you're going to do and what your, uh, what your intentions are and ask them about what they would like to do, what you, they would like for you to do and if, you want them to, if they want you to touch or not touch. Good communication with your client is a must. There are some times if someone is sort of fearful of Reiki because of their religious beliefs or we're told that it was a voodoo of some sort, um, that you want to explain that it is just energy healing and that they can bring spirit into it. We bring spirit into it in a very non-religious way. We bring just God into it as he is. We don't ask for Catholic or Jewish or Islamic healing. We just ask for spiritual healing. And so that's not, that should not concern them really. Just it's, uh, unless they're a person that doesn't believe at all. And then they'll just say it's energy, which it is. All yeah. creatures of energy so 
and it described to them that they might feel some sensation, that they might feel uh, like uh, there's some heat or something happening, but not to be concerned about that. That's just part of what Reiki does for healing and for uh, helping them. Also, if they have aches and pains, I, I heard Max say that he doesn't ask them about that. I do. I do ask them, if, it, if you feel comfortable saying, uh, what, what is it that you want me to help you with? They may say, I have a bad back, I have bad knees, or whatever. And so that is some place that you want to work on with them, because otherwise if you, if you don't ask if they have something that they need worked on, they might not come back if you don't work on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even though Reiki goes where it's supposed to go, even though it's, it, it goes throughout the body and it's a beautiful, wonderful energy, if you don't work in an area where somebody is really feeling intense pain or discomfort, then they might not believe that there's much to it. Does that make sense to you? Yep, definitely. Yep. So I, I always take into consideration what they say. And I ask them also, is there any questions you might have for me right now before we start? Because when, I, when you get on the table, I would prefer you to close your eyes and take off your shoes. Why do I ask that? It's a more comforting position. Now, some people want to start on their stomach, and some people want to start on their back, or whatever. Let them do whatever they want to do in that sense. I prefer them starting on their back so I can work on, uh, do the hand positions that I'm going to show you very shortly. Um, so you can ask them to lay on your, on their back first, and if they do have back problems, you can flip them over after you do the regular hand positions. Now, I'm going to say this about the hand positions. They are a guide. They are not written in stone. They are not, I mean, if they do not work for you, do not use them. If something else works better, use that. Because I'm going to give you some alternative ways for hand positions. All right? Is that okay with you? All yeah. right. Any questions so far? Because I want this to be very interactive. I want you to be very aware of what you're doing as a, as a Reiki person. So please ask questions. And don't be afraid. There's no stupid questions or anything like that because I, I find that some of people say, well, this is a stupid question, but and it's the best question I have all day. So, um, Do uh, you, um, as you're discussing, um, doing your initial discussion, do you um, have a, like a patient information or a consultation form that you fill in, get them to fill in? You can do that, but it is not recognized by the state of New York here that it's a it's a a a, um, a a way to heal people, and so you don't have to have that paperwork. And all the customers, clients, patients, whatever you want to call them, I like to call them clients. Yeah, that's my personal favorite. I know Max likes the word patients, but they are they get to know me pretty fast. They get to feel my energy pretty fast, and they ask their question. I I am very upfront, and I'm very I'm very like say if you have any questions, if you're uncomfortable, if there's something wrong, you let me know right away because being comfortable is one of the most important things about starting your Reiki session. If they're not comfortable. It's not going to work. The energy work. won't flow, will it? No. You have to have, if some people need something under their knees, somebody might need something over their head, somebody might need a cover. I mean, there are those people that even in 80 degree weather still need a blanket over them because that's just who they are. You understand that? So all, always offer what... I, do you need a blanket? Do you need something under your knees? Do you need? And if you do need this during the session, let me know. So you don't sort of fill any, get them to fill any forms out or anything like that. It's all pretty verbal. It's all everything that I do is pretty verbal. 
Now, I do take phone numbers and addresses, and, um, you know, if there's anything, if they want me to write anything down for them, I will. Like, if they need particular care in one area and they want me to write that down and work on that consistently, I'll just get out their name, and it's written in my book. When I do that my appointment, I write things about them in my book. So, and that's what I usually do. Because if you have an hour an appointment, you have this big of a space in your book to write a bunch of stuff. So um, I just write in there what I need to do with them. But I always ask them, how are you feeling? Uh, has things changed? How, how did you feel last time? You know, get up to date on where they are. So it's just courteous and it's comforting for them to know that you care. Yeah. It's comforting. To know that you care. And some people will go into it. I, I know the quiet people are good. They are excellent. I'm not as quiet as everybody because I went, I ask a few questions up front and make sure that all the things that are, are that I'm going to do are going to be taken care of. Okay? That's just the way I am. So, and then, after all that, is there any questions at this point so far? Nope. Okay. Your intentions come into play now, and so do theirs. Their intentions and your intentions must collide, uh, be the same. So when before you start, you say to them, my intention for you today is to help you with your back, uh, bring all your energy fields into a nice alignment so that you have a better health cycle, Work with this or that, whatever it is that you need that you are doing. I I mention my intentions for them, and I ask them what their intentions are for their healing today. Because not only is it my job to bring the energy in, but it is their job to intend that they be healed instead of their mind just being out there thinking about what color your ceiling is and how many dots are and if there's a spider web in the corner. They should, they should have their eyes closed anyway. But I want them to intend that their healing is also good. That, that they feel the energy because what I will tell them is this. Your energy and my energy will combine to help you heal. Plus the energy of the universe or whoever you believe in. And if you don't believe in the energies of the universe, we live in an electromagnetic field. I'll call on them instead. Because the electromagnetic field is our friend. We live in it every day. It is part of who we are. So we can call on that energy as well, if you intend to. Do you understand that? Yep. You call on whatever energies that they will allow you to call on. Alien, spiritual, angel, God, the universe, Mother Gaia, or the electromagnetic field, whatever they feel comfortable with. And if they feel comfortable with you, if you put them at ease, you will know, know it within the first few minutes. So, Because they'll be starting to go, oh, okay, very good. And ask them if, if I can touch. And if they go, if they have questions about touch, tell them that it is non-sexual. And I heard Max mention, you will be sexually attracted to some of your customers. It is what it is. If you put your mind on healing and do the appropriate work, it does not matter if you're sexually attracted to whoever you're working on because your intention is to heal not to uh, send them upstairs into your bedroom. But your intention is to heal, and that is a beautiful connection. And who's to say that someday socially you might become a little closer? It, it, may, it could happen. So, um, but right now your intention is healing, okay? And there are also those that may come in and they may not smell so good, and they may be... You know, you may need the old clothespin on the nose, but you know what? You're not thinking about that. You're thinking 
I would have I immediately go to God and say, you know, this is going to be a little bit challenging for me, God. I need you to help me. And you know what? After I start healing, because I've done healing for the homeless, I work for Dorothy Day House, which is a homeless a place, and there are people that come in, and they do not smell good, and they reek of alcohol, and they reek of uh, all kinds of other drugs. But you know what? Once you are committed to and intended for them to have a great healing, it's, it goes away. You're not even thinking about that. You're thinking about the energy that's coming through your hands. And it will. Even though you do not feel energy necessarily, there will be energy coming through your hands. And it will be flowing through you. And you will be knowing the intent, intent that you started with. Is there any questions about that? Now, my first thing about... Um, also about getting the uh, client ready is just make them feel as much at ease as possible and you know chit chat and small talk at first until you're getting ready to heal play some soft music if they've never done it before they might be a little tense at first but the first here's a secret that I've learned <laughs> I learned from a reflexology person is if you if you um, intend for your um, client to relax right away, ask them if their feet are sensitive. If you could rub their feet for just a, a couple seconds. Now I know if they're dirty, that some people leave their socks on and everything. That's fine, but you if their feet are dirty and everything, maybe you just want to. Put your hands over their feet, but give Reiki to the feet and the uh, reflexology system that's within the foot chakras, uh, because that controls all the body. You, every every uh, nerve in the foot is connected to everything in the body. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Yeah. Go down to the feet and do a little bit. Do five minutes on the feet, and that will re start to relax them. Then what I do is I start on one side of the body and move clockwise around the body and check to see what their energy flow is. Now, if you, you cannot feel any energy flow in your, in your patient. Just go around the body and stay in one stay in a spot for like a minute or two and then move and stay there for a minute or two. But get that, get that body energy all around the body moving because this way they'll have a better healing if that energy if you get that uh, energy flow going do you understand that and clockwise is uh, feminine Reiki so clockwise you can use on everybody because it works it works great so just get that energy moving e even you can do their shoulders their arm to their elbow, their elbow to their knee, the knee to the foot, the foot to the foot, the, the foot to the other knee, the, the knee to the elbow. I'll show you on I'll show you on Bartholomew here. My this is my Reiki client for today. His <laughs> name is Bartholomew. <laughs> but I start <laughs> Hold on. Let me stand up a minute so you can see Bartholomew. Is that a, a good enough picture? Uh, I go. It's hard. Can you see him like this? Yep. I will go from the shoulder to the elbow. And I'll stay there for a bit. And I'll go from shoulder to shoulder. And then I'll go shoulder to elbow, elbow to knee, knee to foot, foot to foot, foot to knee, knee to elbow, elbow to shoulder. 
And that that goes around the body. Of course, I flipped him around instead of uh, walking <laughs> around. I, you just walk around the body in a clockwise way. And when you do that, just hit each of those uh, points for just a minute or two just to get a flow of energy going so that the flow of energy in the body is better. It doesn't have to be excellent, but it just has to be better, and that will help to improve it. And what that does, it will help the energy that you're going to give to the rest of the body uh, chant a better chance. Do you know what I'm saying? You've opened the flow, and the, so this energy that you're going to work on for their intent will be better flowing. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, you do not have to do that to have a successful Reiki session. That is one of the things that I do, and I find it's very helpful because it opens them up, and their, their Reiki sessions are much more effective. They get a greater healing. They feel much more at ease by the time you get around their body you haven't touched anything but the edges of their body and that makes them feel a little co more comfortable also that you've gone around their body and checked it do you not understand that it it shows them that you're being thorough I had somebody said oh how thorough you went all the way around the body I said I was just checking your energy and making sure it was flowing properly now with me, I can feel the energy. When I touch somebody, I immediately know where they hurt. They don't have to tell me. I can, the spirit guides go, they're hurting in the back, they're hurting in the knee, they're hurting in the other. I'll be working on somebody's shoulder and I'll say, your knees are bad, aren't they? And they'll go, how did you know that? And I'll say, spirit told me your knees are hurting. But I prefer them to tell me up front now, just so I don't miss anything, because there is a way to miss something, and that is, if there's a severe blockage, if there's a severe energy blockage in any place and you don't know it, you won't feel anything. If you go to that place and put your hand, you won't feel a thing until you break that energy blockage and then the energy can flow. Do you have any questions about that? Is that, that thing that the quickness is about um, emotional um, imbalance in that area? It's clogged up. That could be, a, that is one reason. Another reason is could be trauma. If they had a trauma to the knee or the elbow or something like that, and it knocked out energy flow there. You know, it's just barely getting through. So you, you say, do you, I have a, one of my clients that comes with me. He was in a very bad accident, and his whole side was taken into like a columbine or one of these, um, tra tractor things that he his whole arm was chewed up and so he has very little feeling there but yet when he does have feeling it's very it it can be very strong because some of the nerves are very still very active and other nerves are just have been destroyed so I worked very carefully on that arm because I want to bring a greater balance of feeling back into the arm the nerve endings and things of that nature. And since I've been working for with him, he his arm has a lot more feeling and a lot more motion. So that's why you want to make sure that you f find out for sure. Because if I were to just put my hands on that arm, I'd probably feel nothing because the energy flow was so blocked. So I, I do like to know. But sometimes they don't tell you everything that's wrong with them. And you'll have to, and I can find other things wrong with them, and they wonder how I knew that. Um, but that's something that's called intuitive. So I have that a little bit. You may develop that as well. So I'm just telling you that could happen. Any questions? Okay. All right. After you go around the body and open it up and make it, and let it flow a little better. Then I'm going to start showing you the hand positions, okay? Let me make sure that I there's nothing else I need to tell you before then. Oh, my paper blew away. Here it is. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, so remember touch, asked if they would prefer touch or no touch. I will give you examples of both of those. And you, you, to synchronize with your patient, if, some, if you have a patient that comes in that's very agitated or has a lot of, it seems like they're like, eh, you might want to um, go to their feet first and, and, and put some Reiki into the feet and then come to the head and place your hands just on the sides of the head. These are a Reiki, a Reiki movement also. A part of, but I would do it first rather than they put it as one of the third or fourth positions. I would do this one first then. You know what I mean? Just to calm them down, relax them, and you know, uh, put them into a, a little more relaxed position. Now, there are people that will ask you, ask them also, is there some part of the body that you're hypersensitive? Because some people are hypersensitive about their ears or their feet or, you know, there's a part of their body they don't want you to touch. Ask them that up front. Is there a part of your body that is hypersensitive that you do not want me to touch? Just let me know ahead of time and I won't go there. I'll, be, I'll use the hand-on approach, off approach for that area of the body. Some people it's the ears. I've had ears and feet. Those are the two most common. I've had they, oh, you can't touch my ears for some reason. And you can't touch my feet for some reason. So um, those two areas seem to come up every now and then. Not often. One in maybe 10 or 12 people. So... And we also already discussed Reiki and sex. Reiki is not a sexual. It was not created to be a, a, a sexual thing. However, it can heal anything. That doesn't mean you have to put your hands on their genitals. You can put the, your hand near them, like on top of the stomach, and push the Reiki energy down. You could hold your hand over that area and let a non-touch Reiki work in that area. There have been times where people said that they had an operation in the groin or whatever, and you sh and since Reiki is not sexual, you shouldn't touch them there, unless they're your family members or something like that. That would be okay if there's somebody you knew really well or have been very close to, like a family member or. You know, even your child or something might be all right. But if they're somebody that you're not acquainted with or just a, a Reiki customer, I would use my hand over top of that area. And with ladies, if there's something in the breasts, I would have them cover their breasts. And so you can put your hands over that too. So Because sometimes when, you, when you're really concentrating on your Reiki healing, you're your eyes are closed and you don't know what your hands are doing and so if you're a, a guy and you're working on a female over their breasts you want them to do this so you don't accidentally touch them because that can be very offensive so just to let you know <laughs> so I make sure that they are totally protected mentally and physically also, make sure that whenever they come into your work, your space where you're working, that the temperature is appropriate, that you cover them if they need covered, if they feel, or if, they, if it's just their feet that need covered or whatever, that you have the appropriate tools there to make them comfortable. <coughs> Comfort is key. Comfort is key. They won't heal if they're not comfortable. Okay, May, Reiki makes you one with everything as well. Um, whenever you're using Reiki on a person, you're one with them in the sense that your energies are going together. So there is a sense of oneness. So if there is somebody that you really don't like that comes that you're giving Reiki to, you really have to suspend that that feeling for them because 
you're going to have to use your unconditional love because if you're feeling harsh toward them while you're trying to heal them, it's not going to work. You're going to have you're going to have to suspend that that emotional belief right there, and that may not be easy to do. And if that is the case, if somebody angers you and you cannot get to a place where you're good with it, then you should not work on them. That would be one of the times that you should not work. The other times are when you feel too weak to work or too sick to work. You should stay home and not give everybody what you have. <laughs> so, or you should not have them come. But you do not want to work in any kind of an emotional upsetting scene where you're not feeling emotionally ready for it. Because what happens? That will transfer. Just as they can transfer things to you, we'll talk about that toward the end here, they can, you can transfer things back and forth, not necessarily illnesses unless they're very sick with a virus or something, but pain can be transferred, psychological pain can be transferred, all kinds of things, and so you protect yourself. That is also part of the preparation is to protect yourself when you're going into a Reiki session. You say, Dear Lord, cover me with the light and let this be a full and fully protected. You also protect them. Put a light protection around them as well. So you don't want to, to bring into yourself anything that might be harmful. Any questions? I'm going to show you some hand positions. I know there's, I could talk for a hundred years on how to prepare for Reiki because there's so many ways to do it. But you will find your own style and what works for you and mentally compatible with you. Some people do a whole meditation before they do Reiki. I just do some thank yous, ask God to be with me and protect me, love, love the patient, be one with us, help us to heal. You can find different ways to come into a Reiki session and be, ah, I'm ready for this. You know what I mean? Even if some people don't drink coffee that day. Me, I have 30 cups. I don't care. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> the Reiki goes through no matter what. I find that um, I find that I could be a little distracted sometimes, but the Reiki still comes. And it will bring me back into focus. And I'm going, thank you. That's beautiful. I love that. That Reiki focuses you on what you're doing. Because of your intent, because that intent is right up front, brings you right back. If you would be distracted by somebody walking in the room or doing something, make sure you come back to your intent. Even if you have to say it again. Come back to your intent and you'll be better. You'll go right back in focus. It works right back in focus because of your intent and because healing needs to be done. All right? Let's go back to Bartholomew. <laughs> there are certain uh, hand positions that the Reiki book gives you, and one of them is behind the head. Now, you can't just go like this. That, that'll pull their hair, that'll do all kinds of things. You, you take one hand and you move the head up and you put your hand underneath. All right? And then you take the other hand, you put that one down, you take the other hand and lift the head up and put the hand underneath. And therefore you have your hands right behind their head. And this is the first Reiki move. And what this does is it brings, it actually your fingertips are right at the spine. And so it's bringing energy through the hands into the head and spine. Okay, where does all, where do all the nerve endings meet? Where does you, where do you actually feel the pain from? It's from the head. All, everything's attached to the head. It is the center of all, it is the computer center. So it sends out the fact that you have pain. It's the, the nerve system is is what your what the brain is activating. 
So, so this is the first big position. Does everybody see that? Yep. Yep. It up. All right. Now, how do you get rid of your hands from being underneath of them? You do the same thing. You push their head up and remove the hand. And then the hand is down, and then you pull the head up and remove the hand. So that you're not pulling their hair, you're not causing... I mean, some people, when they see that you're coming for them, they'll just lift their head up, which is all right. But, you know, for those that have their eyes closed and are really concentrating on the intent to be healed, you can just come and naturally lift that up and put your hand under and move the head to the side and put your hand under. You'll have to practice this on your dog or another person because it's not a natural motion that you're used to. It does require some practice. The first time I did it, I pulled somebody's hair because I just I put my hand too far under there to lift their hand up, head up. So, I mean, you have to do it very gently. So be, be aware that some of the Reiki moves, I, I very rarely use this one. And the reason why I rarely use it is because I do acupressure along with Reiki, and I have a much better insert of energy through other areas. So that's just me. The second movement is, can you can do this on there, a touch or a non-touch movement, a touch or a non-touch. It's over the eyes. Now, some... The lady that works on my eyes, which I have bad sight, uh, puts her hands right on, right over, just like this. Do you see that? Now, other people do it like this. They don't touch because some people don't like their face touched. You can you can ask them. I tell her go ahead and touch my face. I don't care. But other people are like oh. Their hands might be dirty or germy or whatever. I don't want them touching my face. So you can do it above the head like this. But it's over the eyes and over the third eye as well. And this is, this is the second Reiki movement. It helps with energy flow. It helps with opening up thought processes. It helps with um, also with... Um, nervousness, tense, tension, things of that nature. The third movement is over here on the side of the, like the, take the, like your, uh, like I showed you the first time, the cheeks, your, uh, the cheeks like this. Now these are the Reiki moves that are in your book. All right? I'm showing you those. So, and these all have to do with opening the brain, the head, clearing the thoughts, clearing all the, the sensory areas that cause um, emotional blockages, things of that nature. Understood? That's all right, then the third one, fourth one, is under here, right under, under here, under the chin, like that, but it'll be like here. Any questions? No. no. This one is for the throat chakra, also for the jaw and all the things the glands, the areas in this area that that could be now, everything in the head has been worked on now for the first four moves. You don't have to use them all. Not everybody needs them all. But if you feel that they do, use them. All right? It's up to you which ones you use because you will sense. Reiki is, Reiki helps you to sense what people need sometimes. Now the fifth move is down here. Left hand over right hand over the heart. Now if it's a female, you would be up higher. You would not be on right over her breasts. You would just try to do something. 
fairly high around the neck area here. On a male, I would go down farther on the heart area. <clears throat> but if you know, if it's a female, you leave it up here. Be polite. Don't be like um, she feels uncomfortable or anything. And in fact, you can ask at that point, "Is this comfortable for you?" And I usually do. And if I know the client, I know their comfort level after a while. But if you don't know your client, please always ask. If there's something questionable, ask them if it's comfortable. Because you might be surprised. They might just be going, oh, yeah, that's great. Or they might say, well, and then you'll know that they're not that comfortable. But this is the fifth hand motion. Left hand over right. Left hand over right around the heart area these are all these positions are in the book now those are the big five those are the first five and then there's one with the that you can go down to the sides of their on the sides of their legs down here That is a Reiki move. This is for, remember, Reiki energy goes where it needs to go. You don't have to be right on top of it. However, the closest place you can get to that area without it hurting is the best place to be. Does that make sense? Because they get it a little stronger. It's a little more intense. And plus the fact they realize you're working on that right there. And like, especially knees. Some people can't, you know, have very sensitive places on their body where it hurts so bad you can't touch it. So you can't touch some areas, so you have to, to get as close as you can without touching it. But 95% of the time, if they have hurting knees, you put your knee, hands right on the knees. And you can feel the energy going in there as well. Or if they have bad elbows, you can put the hands right on the elbows. Or if their neck is hurting, this is one that I use. This is one of my own moves. I, I put take the hands and put them behind the neck in this fashion. Not to choke them or anything, but it's easy to just slide your hand behind their neck and put your thumbs down on, on this part of their shoulder. Wait, let me show you. Put your thumbs down here because you're, you're grabbing of the neck like this. See what I'm saying? Some people have bigger necks than others, so you uh, work accordingly. Work where if, if your hands are comfortable on their body, usually that means it's comfortable for them, and not always. But you can usually feel where there's a comfortable space so that you can move your hands to these different things. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Now, here's another one. You put your hand, I'll do it backwards. Put your hand under the back and then your hand on the top. This is for back conditions for people that can't lay on their stomach but you can get to their back this way. And also the stomach and all the different organs that are there can be done, used in this way. You can you put your hand under the, under, the, under the back right here at the base of the spine and then on top right about here. Now, you can adjust that position to anywhere that is comfortable for you because you can adjust that position to anywhere comfortable for you because people will have different areas of the back that are hurting and different things that are going on there and you will you'll be able to just ask him is this comfortable for you and if not they'll say do I need to move my hand up or down so and usually you can find the spot and they're like oh right there you got it so, and so that's just the way it is. 
you will develop your own ways of doing things. You will develop your own um, style because you need your own style. It has to be who you are, who you are in your perfect self. So if that is who you are, you know, use those different ways. Now let me show you some alternative things. It's hard to show with with Bartholomew because he's just a little teddy bear, but <laughs> it is beneficial to see some of these ways. I'll show you. Hold on. Now, if you know that they have shoulder pain, okay, shoulder pain, you can, you can, your fingers are, can actually fit into little spots in the, on the shoulders. Do you, did you ever feel that? When you practice this week, feel somebody's shoulders. There's all kinds of little indentations and places. These, use these, don't press real hard, but use these as areas to put the energy in in a greater way. Because the closer to the bone that you get, the more energy that flows. The closer to a sensitive area you get, if you're holding, holding say, around, oh, I can't even show you on that. But um, but I use my fingertips to put in energy into people. And so, therefore, I find ways to push the energy into people. Like, you could hold, do this. Do you see where I'm touching? There's a little dent, indentation there. There's a little indentation there. And there. And there. And guess what? Energy goes in better when, when they're closest to the nerves or closest to the pressure points that um, the pain is at. So I'm not going to teach you all of acupressure right now. I'm just showing you some of the things that may help you in the future. But you can learn. I, all I want you to learn right now is, is the, the positions in the book. There's several in there. I didn't show them all to you but I showed you the most important ones and there's a couple with along that would be uh, along the side like this on the body and there would be others down lower and um, but these the first five are very were some of the the a very or most original of the Reiki positions that were used so, any questions about those? Now, I have one, I have question. one question. Yeah. Um, um, does, does the energy the flow energy equally, equally across, across both ends? Or do you oh, feel... Oh, wonderful equal? question. No, it does not necessarily have to flow equally across both hands. Let me explain why. Sometimes, if you are in... It, in fact, it doesn't have to even... you. you one hand may be getting a lot of energy, and the other man may not have any any at all. Let me explain about Reiki also. I wish I was there in person for each of you to show you what I, how how I, how you feel it, because I would be, I would be able to show you on your body how it feels. But I can feel energy in my hands. I know that you can too because you just proved it to me today when you went like this and you gathered the energy from the universe. But when you touch somebody this week, when you are doing your practicing, feel the energy that leaves your hands. Can you feel it? Does it feel stronger in one place than another? Does it feel lighter in one place than another? Do you have a cold spot? Do you feel cold spots? Do you feel hot spots? Do you feel, what is it that you're feeling? Ask them the questions if they're feeling pain and then go to that area and then check that area out compared to another area. And if it's more, if you feel more energy going into one area more than another, chances are they need that Reiki in the area where the energy is flowing the, the strongest. Now, not everybody feels their Reiki energy flowing out of them. 
So just go by what the the client says. If they need it on their back, put it on their back, and then ask him, "Is this a good position? Is this a good position?" And if they say it's a good position, stay there for a little while because the energy has to go in. The energy has to become a part of what is going on. You know what I mean? It has to um, assimilate within the body. So I, I'll be interested to see after you do your practicing this week what kind of energies you felt when you were practicing because that's that's just the beginning. That's the beginning of it. I felt energies when I first started, but nothing like what I feel now. This is totally a different, a totally a different world now. The energies are much stronger. I've learned to do intentions better. I've learned how to hone my craft better. So this will happen with you as well. You will learn how to do it better as you go on. One thing will work with you, and another thing won't. You may never feel energy by doing this one thing. So don't do it anymore. And if it doesn't help somebody, why do it? So if and if you're going along in this particular thing, this particular place on the neck is really helping somebody, then stay there for a while and let that energy soak in so that they can get a good treatment there. Now the person that I worked with with insomnia, I did like a Vulcan mind melt, like uh, like uh, Max was talking about earlier. Max is a good healer as well, and he does this Vulcan mind melt thing, and it works very well on the on the head. This person no longer had insomnia because the intent was to heal that completely and it was healed. And that was my first, the first time that somebody said to me, came back to me and said, that completely worked. And it was his first Reiki session ever. So, um, but now he's, he goes to Reiki, he's from Washington DC, he came up to visit a friend and I was able to help him with with that particular problem and somebody that he was with had a sciatic nerve problem I must have been on on top of the world that day because he no longer has sciatic nerve problem so they went back to Washington DC and were like both going oh my god they sent me money in, they sent me all this money in the mail and I'm going <laughs> okay <laughs> um, but that wasn't why I was doing it. I was helping out some friends. But they were so, so, so happy with the results that they, they sent money. So that was nice. Any questions right now? I heard something. Are you, uh, any questions about the hand positions at this time? Do you mind a question about how much? You were saying that um, if you put your hands on someone because they really need it, how how long do you keep it there? I mean, if they really need their shoulders, I think you were talking about. How long do you really? I mean, how do you Excellent feel? Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, for me, uh, let me explain what it's like for me, and then I'll explain what it's like for others that are just starting Reiki. For me, I can. Find a place and the energy goes in like crazy. I sometimes leave it there 10 minutes. I mean, if it's still going in and I feel that energy moving right there and they're, they're saying that's a bad spot, I let it go until I feel it start to dwindle, until the energy starts not to go in as strong. Now, if somebody has a, a bad place and you don't feel the energy so strong, and you're on that area, let it go for a little while, and if you still don't feel anything, I would move. Try to find an area closer uh, that is uh, a better fit for you. You'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. Yep. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome there back. He is. All right. Hello? <laughs> Hello. 
I what did, was the last thing you heard? <laughs> um, I've forgotten. <laughs> um, oh, you was you kind of. It, uh, I was answering his question about how long to keep your hand on a particular area yeah. if you uh, if somebody's uh, experiencing real pain. Uh, my answer is. Keep it on there a while. If, if you feel a lot of energy going into that particular area, then you must uh, leave your hand on it for a while until the energy starts to, to uh, wane, or it's, wane is the word. It's energy <laughs> starts to wane, and then, um, um, then move it. But if you don't feel any energy and you have your hand on there for a couple minutes, I would move it around to try to find a better connection. Does that answer your question? What, how long does, do your sessions last? I do hour sessions. Okay. And Jim, when you say move it around to another area, you mean just like near that area but somewhere close to it? Yes, I would say um, Somewhat close to it, but try to get a better. Go move slowly. Move your hands very slowly, and see if you can find a better connection. Like stop every couple seconds, and see if there's a better connection there. But if there isn't, then I would move on to another part of the body. Completely. If if you really can't find a good connection there, then it really doesn't need that much work. Or the blockage is severe, and you're not going to be able to break it with just Reiki that day, but they may need more of, uh, they may no, need more of an energy field uh, energized. But let, let me tell you this, once you're doing your practice this week, once you're going through your practice and you're using your pet or your brother or your wife or husband or boyfriend, whatever, See what kind of things you feel when you're touching them. I want to get your feedback on that as well as your how the intent went, how the whole session went. I would try to do at least a couple sessions, at least two or three, before you come back to report because one session doesn't always give you the very much information. But when you do two or three, you're starting to see the difference between people or dogs and animals and uh, things of that nature. Also, in Reiki, I didn't even get here yet. We're running out of time. Um, the chakras are important. And I, I know Max mentioned them to you. There is a way to brighten the chakras, but we'll get that into, into that next week, probably. But the chakras are very important. The root is red. The Sacral or sexual is orange. The solar plexus is yellow. Heart is green. Throat or communication is blue. Third eye is indigo. He said that's purple, but indigo is actually dark, dark blue. And then there's violet, which is the crown. The third eye is indigo, which is a dark, dark blue because of that's and it, it's like finding stars in space. You have a lot, a lot of things that can come into that space. The third eye has a lot of area for, uh, for growth, and so does the crown. But so do all the chakras. But I see the third eye as a very important place for uh, psychic energy and things of that nature. So. Any questions? I think I'm going to have to call him back pretty soon so we can do the attunements for today. I have a um, question. Yeah. Um, uh, how many times a week can we do um, sessions for an individual? Now, that's a good question also. Some people can have, some people need multiple sessions because they come in in very bad shape. I had a customer client, patient, whatever you want to call him. He was a FedEx man. He came in. He was broken. His back was hurting. His shoulders were hurting. There was, his calves were blocked. He needed stints in his legs 
for blood flow and everything. And I worked on him for two weeks in a row. And his backache is like non-existent anymore. He still needs stints in his legs, though. That's something that it's, it's really, really... Uh, it's been going on for a long, long time. It would take a, a five days in a row of Reiki to even budge that situation. But yes, you can do Reiki on a person once every other day. I wouldn't do it every day. They have to recover from the energy treatment, and it has to soak in to see how they feel. Then if they feel like they need another energy treatment in two days, then I could they could do another I do have a customer, client, patient that comes twice a week. They come Tuesday and Friday. So I do a Reiki on every week. So uh, that's the most often I do Reiki, usually. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But if somebody needs it every two days and they're willing to pay you and uh, get the benefit from that, they can benefit from a lot of Reiki during a week because it does it does build you know it, it it can be very very beneficial but now you know Reiki doesn't always work with um, just aches and pains it also works with psychic uh, with uh, physical uh, not physical emotional pains psychic pains and things of that nature but we'll get into that kind of thing next week. Right now I'm just uh, concerned about you getting the hand positions for the physical. And we'll talk more about the advanced Reiki one next week. Because that goes into this, people with uh, problems with their romantic life. They have a hard life. They have depression. These are things that are different from regular pain, but they can make themselves into regular pain. Like some people have a, a pain in their side. A lot of times side pain is emotional pain because there's really nothing wrong there. There's no muscle. There, the doctor says, I can't find anything. But what it is is there, they took... A situation from a long time ago or recently and they pushed it down they didn't release it and it becomes a pain or a sickness in their body now you can also work on those kind of pains with Reiki because even with Reiki 1 you can still work on those kind of pains any questions about that Alrighty then. I'm not sure when he wanted to, how how long his uh, attunement's going to be, but usually it's about 20 minutes. So um, I'm going to go on for a little bit longer. Uh, now these these hand positions and everything that you learned today, I hope you will practice them. Think about um, your intent before you start this. Remember all the things that we talked about right at the front. I want to go over some of those to refresh your memory about the intent of Reiki, the how to prepare yourself for Reiki, how to prepare your client for Reiki, because it's important that they feel comfortable and, and not feel um, like voodoo is about to be performed on them, because there are those still out there when you say the word Reiki, they have no idea what it is. And so it's, but by the end of the next, by the end of this decade, we will, Reiki will be well known, I'm sure. And those of you who plan to do Reiki, I'm sure if you want to make a living out of it, you can. But one place that you can go to get Reiki customers is go to a Reiki share, a Reiki, uh, or a metaphysical group, make up to your own cards. I know uh, right now you're only doing Reiki 1, but if you get to the practitioner level, which is Reiki 2, you're allowed to do Reiki for money and for as a business. 
for Ricky One, they prefer that you just do it for donations or just for practice. Depending on how um, confident you are, you can ask for donations. If you feel like you do an excellent job, if you do a really great Reiki on people and they find benefits in it, sure, why not ask for an energy exchange? That is not a problem. You just can't give them a, a flat rate. You have to take whatever they give you. <laughs> um, is there any questions about that? All right. Uh, so the intention is that we give you the initiation symbol, the first symbol into your hands. Uh, dog, sit, sit up upright. Stan, sit upright. Um, it's essential. Yeah. Uh, we invite uh, basically the Reiki energy to enter your palms and open them for Reiki healing. That yeah. would be the first part of initiating you in into Reiki one attunement. And that's about it. And at the end, we'll just, Jim will just do the blessing, the usual blessing, and then that's it. And we will welcome you, um, <laughs> uh, the first uh, Reiki, yeah, that's Reiki. what we, Reiki 1 practitioner, first, first, first initiation, yes. Reiki 1A, and next week is Reiki 1B. <laughs> yes, How about, yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. Reiki 1A uh, initiation, yes. And that's about it. Please uh, invite the energy to come into you and uh, close your eyes, breathe in the Reiki energy and direct it into the palms, on, or in, into your palms and up, offer your hands for, for the, like that, or for, for receiving it. And um, that's it. We'll do it about 10, 15 minutes. Thank you for your healing energy. Thank you, Jillian, and thank you for your healing energies. Thank you, Stan, and thank you for your healing energies. Bless you. May you use Reiki for a wonderful and holistic and beautiful thing, and may it bring you much joy and satisfaction. <clears throat> Present your hands for us, please. And keep your eyes closed. The beautiful symbol has been put into your hands. Ignite your energy for Reiki. Accept these 
responsibilities for healing. Thank God for this energy that he has given you. Let it become more of who you are. Let it become important if you so desire. Thank you for your attentiveness today. Thank you for listening to the Spirit and being here with us. Look at your heart again today and know that you are blessed. And go in peace. Do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have lots to add. We'll add that next time. Meanwhile, go and uh, use your energy. Don't let it stay in hands. Use it. Let it out. The more you give away, the more comes to you. Yeah. No one comes to you by chance. You all are. We are all brought together. And as founder said a couple of days ago, you accept Reiki and Reiki accepts you. You become Reiki and Reiki becomes you. Amen. Amen. And now I'll close with a little blessing. Dear Mother, Father, God, thank you for these beautiful people. Thank you for their hearts and for their intents. We ask that you be with them now, guide them, help them experience the truth about Reiki and about you through Reiki. Show them the love, the understanding, the integrity that all comes with it. There are so much that goes with a, re a wonderful gift like this and we just thank you for bestowing it upon them and giving them the ignition, the energy to be able to use it. Now we'll go in peace, and we thank you for your presence here today. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Did everybody get something out of it? <laughs> you will know in the night. You will know yeah. In the night. yeah, I think so, definitely. I just, you know. My hands felt hot and I felt like something was happening, so thank you. You're welcome. Something was happening. Good. Good. I'm sure you, if anybody would happening. know, you would know, Jim. You would know. Something was happening and don't doubt it because it was. If things happen, accept them, welcome them. Some things are a change, a change, you know, you will be changing. And you'll be changing as much as you allow that. And watch what you watch. And watch what you eat. And pray. And uh, it's also play and dance with it. It is a happy energy. Accept it and uh, accept Believe it with it. faith. With yeah. faith. With faith. Definitely. You have to, you've got to believe it's. It's all in the belief, isn't it? Definitely. Yes. We just introduced it to our friend, spirit friends, and now make them your friends and become become their friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. All right. Uh, with that, we close. Mm. Okay. How thank you. Find very us? Yes. Go ahead. I'll just say thank you very much, Max and Jim. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. You are our first student. Thank you. Congratulations with the practice. Yeah, thank you both. Do yeah. some practice, and we will talk again. I think your practices will reveal some beautiful things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm.
I think you're some Reiki in about yourself because Reiki does show you things about yourself that you didn't know before. And also, thank you for teaching me today. You were silent most most of the time, but you know, just because you were here, I pronounced many new things which I never pronounced before, and it was a very pleasant experience for me to to have the students so I can I can pronounce things which were. I didn't even know they were pronounceable. <laughs> uh, organizational. To find us, go to humancolony.org, humancolony.org, and there will be a Reiki menu, a menu, Reiki page. And there, there is a manual. It's um, a Maloney manual. We, we bought the rights for Reiki 1. And there will be, at the end of that manual, will be my uh, manual, three pages on. Galactic and spiritual components of Reiki, and then, and then there will be, uh, and the, then contact uh, Reiki at humancolony.org to sign up for next classes, or if you want to study yourself through the recordings and then come to, to us and we will do initiation and examine initiation, then uh, it's also an option for self-teaching students. And Kim is our uh, helper, so contact him, Kim, through you know any means of you know Kim is on on, on uh, all her contacts are on the website, Kim, um, and then she she would coordinate the payments and everything else. And uh, if you have any questions and sign ups, go go through Kim or through me if you like. And I'm also accessible through Skype because email today was very sluggish. It was took like several hours to 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 receive emails. So Skype, my Skype is Max two o four o five o seven M A X two o four o five o seven two zero four zero five zero seven. You can sign up through Skype to me and uh, if you have any questions. And my email, is, my email is jimreiki at gmail dot com. And I think my uh, Skype address is on on the uh, website. Yep. On the website, yeah, humancolony.org. So we'll do Reiki uh, 1B uh, next week, Monday, the same time at uh, 2 p.m. EST. Uh, then there will be a break. I will be away. And then uh, we'll continue doing Reiki 1s. And in about two months, we'll do start doing Reiki 2s. And what's good about Reiki 2, we will uh, teach you how to become successful, or at least, yeah, how to become successful practitioners and find your patients and actually make money on that. We'll give you the the tools, and then it's up to you what you make with them. But we'll, we'll share what you know about marketing of Reiki and the community, and Reiki community, all these tools. And also you will receive the, and Reiki 2 will receive the Reiki symbols and more advanced. Because you already have experience, we'll exchange and discuss and troubleshoot and, and learn more about the nature of the Reiki. And, um, and um, that's the plan for next few months. So see you later, and thank you again very much for those who are present and for those <laughs> who will be watching later. Yes. Thanks for listening. I hope we weren't too boring. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Thank you. All right. Good night. And talk thank to you. Soon. Good night. And I'm going to bed now. <laughs> I'm going bowling now. <laughs> good night, California. Good night, France. Good night, England. Good night. Good night, good night, good night New York. Good night, Chicago. Good night, everybody. Good night.